Yo, how's it going, folks? Sorry, I just finished work. I am going as fast as I can. Wait, it started already? I thought it starts at six o'clock. God, I really feel sick. All right, so. Sure thing, dude. That's that. All right, we're going to have to fix this ad hoc because, uh, unfortunately, I got a call from my workplace, uh, my place of work, uh, 25 minutes ago asking if I wanted to be made redundant. So I was stuck on that phone call for the best part of about 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes having that discussion. So... That's why I'm a little unprepared, because I planned after work at five to get all this done. So, do bear with me just a few minutes while I get everything set up. Just trying to get everything. Alright, so that's that. I'm watching. I mean, this is the official one. Oh, God. Not the phone call I wanted to have 20 minutes before our stream. I'll tell you that much. Why Silk Song? So much Silk Song. I mean, I saw an Overwatch free. They're a bit delusional there. Uh, 10 minutes to start time. All right, let's get this sorted. <laughs> Fuck. Man, they couldn't have waited for... <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, I need to test the audio. Let me quickly test the audio. Lifetime, I've been busy. 
Xbox on. So, I look forward to my downtime. Xbox, go to Titanfall. This is insane. Alright, audio works. So that's good. I think we're almost there. Just uh, close this. Uh, let me save that. Oh, Sony has secured Final Fantasy VII Trilogy as a console exclusive. Sony has secured the Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy as a console exclusive. Let's go and he's talk up the benefits of console exclusive. Well, it clearly shows that play Square Enix are happy and that is the end of Final Fantasy VII on Xbox. If you want to play Final Fantasy VII, you're going to go to thing. There's no talks of Final Fantasy XVI, so I suspect that will still come to Xbox. There you go. During the subsequent interview, IGN boss Phil Spencer wouldn't be drawn whether other PlayStation exclusives like Final Fantasy Remake or XVI will also come to Xbox, but he said the Japanese holiday just coming to Microsoft's console was really important. But, uh, yeah, I think XVI will come along, but seven is just too big of a title. 16 didn't sell consoles. I am seeing people buying PS5s just for Final Fantasy VII. Uh, and yeah, that's a, that's a wrap, folks. That, as they say, is that. Because that is a wrap. I mean, there was always a chance. You know, Arthur's a closet pony, right? Arthur's a proper closet pony. Alright, so that's done. I ended up just buying those on the Switch, Pele. I'm trying to... Got a few minutes left. So that's... Uh, place me in here. And... Let me drag you through. Dude, I have not had any chance to plan this because of my redundancy phone call. So I don't have anything set up for like a image or anything for you. I wasn't expecting that phone call today. Because uh, guess what, guys? Our company, though, I can't tell you where I work or who it's with. We've had a merger. And guess what? The redundancy jobs are being, you know, the redundant jobs, the duplicate jobs are being pushed out now. It's part, of the, it's part of the whole thing. So, uh, I'm being ABK'd, as they say. <laughs> uh, I am being ABK'd. But, you know, it's part of what a, what a merger is. Uh, that's because there's a particular leaker who has a 100% track record of being right. And he's saying that it's coming end of this year. And so far, he, he's got a hundred, he's, you know, he's been right about everything. So that's going to be interesting. I still don't believe it, mind you. Uh, 
Oh, can they even hear you? I don't think so. Like I said, I've, I've, I'm running on backup time right now. Let me see. I should be able to hear you. Where's Discord chat? Discord chat? Discord chat? Try now. Can anybody hear me in the yeah, chat? Yeah, they, they can hear you. All right, there we go. They can hear you. Um, let's see here. Uh, apparently, Starfield is supposed to be coming to PlayStation by the end of the year. I mean, we've heard the same rumors before, but... I think I even replied to somebody. I personally still don't believe it, but time will tell, right? Time will tell. When is the DLC coming? It's supposed to be coming this month, Arthur. Hey, Diablo. Gaming movies, Benaya. Sorry if I missed anyone. Uh, just That's rushing so to be Knight. prepped. That's the person's name, Silk Knight. Starfield is, will be on PS5. I mean, I was expecting Starfield to go in 2026. When Xbox moves to Xbox 2. November and December of 24, the 2025 plan is even bigger, featuring well-established franchises in the Xbox universe. Uh, let me fix that. I should have fixed it. How's everybody hearing me now? Oh. Uh, I wouldn't say they're getting rid of their exclusivity, but what I'm more interested in is uh, how Sony's going to play their new PlayStation launcher. I thought they would have yeah, used Ghost okay. of Tsushima um, as their bargaining chip, because that's a big game. That's a big, big game. Can't believe that game got uh, 83 Metacritic. That's, that, that's crazy. That game deserved way more. But, um... That's going to be interesting. Wait, which part? Uh, uh, PlayStation. Online. The PlayStation launcher. Because if I was PlayStation, what I would do going forward from now is that all PlayStation games that come to PC will be six months to a year exclusive to their launcher mm -hmm. to entice PlayStation uh, PC players to buy into the PlayStation platform. And then after a year, for those people that waited, then push it out to Steam. Ghost isn't one of those, though. That's coming out on Steam and Epic at the same time. But that's a smart business thing to do. You know, limit it to your launcher for a year. Not what Xbox did. Yeah, the guy's name is Silk Knight. Ben, He's that's because... Tsushima is getting a PC port. Unveiled at the next sequel PS5 mid-year event. And then Starfield on the PS5 by November, December of this year. Ben, that's because uh, Sony knows how valuable exclusives are. That's it. You know it. what? I I'm playing through Rebirth. And I am so disappointed. There are so many features of that game that are gutted. It's not even funny. I'm loving it, on the other hand. I'm also a lot farther than you. Yeah, but I know what to expect. I'm not expecting the original. And I'm happy it's not like the original. Storyline, I agree with you. However, I'm talking about the game mechanics. Isn't it like Remake? 
everything that it takes from remake, it does step it up and do better. It's got the synergy skills. It's got uh, more fluid combat. So what more do you oh, want? I'm talking about. I I'm talking about things like the gold saucer that everybody was anticipating for. I've heard nothing but good things about it. The, the place is genuinely, absolutely fabulous to look at. It is huge, it is expansive, and it has pretty much the same story, you know, as we expect. What I'm disliking are the mini games and the challenges, the battle square, the chocobo racing. It is garbage. Uh, by the way, chat, how's the audio? I mean, look at it. I've got it. It's too loud still. Is that better? It is really loud. Like, I can barely hear anything over uh, the audio. It is really, really loud. Oh. Yep. Here we go. Let's go. Here we go, folks. 10 out of 10. I've called it. Hey, Chris. 10 out of 10, what? This game is 10 out of 10 already. Just oh. just because it's got the Xbox logo. <laughs> <laughs> You're so bad. Won't you at least tell me what we're doing here? All I know is that it's serious. I've opened the volume right. a bit more. It's more than serious, Zoruna. Wait, it she looks familiar. Dangerous. Looks like Prince of Persia. Yeah. It's the female character from his, the Mirage. Oh, but Assassin's Creed. Yeah. In my experience, the greatest harm often comes from the best intentions. The cycle is starting again. How many more times must we endure the vanity of nope. the night? Okay. When there isn't a path to be found, make one. What is going on? Unknown nine, the awakening. See, I said a ten. He gave it You've a nine. Been here before. I was close. Countless times, and so shall you be here again. In fact, you're here right now. You can't Unknown hear. Uh, you still can't hear power. I mean, I've got him almost at maximum. Learn how to wield Can all hear me? skills in the world of Unknown Nine with an in-depth developer update on Xbox Wire. Showcase volume is pretty low. God, you guys need to make your mind up. Some are saying it's really low. Some are saying it's really everyone's high. Everyone's got an ex-employer they wish they never worked for. Not everyone's okay. ex-employer okay. set them up to take a fall. Is that better? Awakening. Just so happens they frame the wrong witch. It's fine. I think they're just trolling you. They call me Lady Luck. Oh, wait. Is this and every card I draw is lucky. No. And when I find out what my old coven is up to, they better hope they have a good hand. Okay, Dez is just trolling them. Hmm. Over there! She's here! Not tonight, boys. No, I'm low. Power boss is low? If the coven wants to play, they'll have to play dirty. Try that. How's this now, folks? I mean, if that's still low, I give up. Uh, let me see if I can do something on my end. What game was that? I didn't even see. Sleight of Hand. Alright, it's just... My comic style filled. The creators of the War of Nine and Frostborn. What if? 
you could change the decisions you regret in your life. And Just see the outcomes of those choices with Nothing your special. very own eyes. The Altars tells the story of Unknown Yandalf, Nine Awakening and the a last simple one miner was who survived uh, a crash landing on a hostile planet. And this looks this one. He quickly realizes that what was supposed to be a lifetime job opportunity Alters. turns into a desperate fight for his life. Yan will need to handle a large mobile base that's designed to be operated by an entire team of qualified personnel. I can hear him just fine. Even worse, the planet Yan landed on revolves around the deadly scorching star. Escaping the sunrise is crucial for survival. Despite his best efforts, Yan simply lacks the time and skills to deal with all these problems on his own. Oh god, it's a uh, full out shelter Yan all over is again. On is home to a mysterious substance Project called Dark Rapidium. is what it said on the back of his jacket. With its use and the help of the quantum computer on board, yeah. Yan is able to create hey, I like alternative Fallout versions shelter. of himself. The Alters. <laughs> okay. Each one of them is the result Fallout of altering the crucial decisions. That would be pretty fire, actually. Past. The altars are a reflection of the questions he asks himself. What if I never left my hometown? What if I didn't drop out of college? What if I fought harder to save my marriage? Our altars have the necessary knowledge and skills that we desperately need to succeed. But they also come with their own goals, ambitions, and fears, all Alters. derived from okay. their different life paths. And that can generate problems. Stop pretending you have any idea how wow, I feel. Wow, did you feel. see that menu across the top? And coherent decision making. That base A overview, management, workplaces, alters. The verge of failure. Damn, I just hope I don't f everything up again. You want a relationship that lasts, I don't know. put some effort in it. Each Yan is a different person. The talking animation seems a little wonky. It will wonky. be extremely difficult to keep everyone happy. You gotta learn how to say no sometimes. I don't know about but the whole... But we must do whatever we can. Like, white line because cut as out the mission goes on, around each of the, the challenges persons. will only pile up. But it doesn't Actually, bad. on the stream source, it's exactly the same. Obstacles on the outside. Internal tensions that could prove to be even more dangerous. I'd definitely give this game and a shot. And the ticking clock of the deathly sun behind our backs. That's what I think Fallout Shelter. The only way home is to press forward. It's like a more 3D Fallout Shelter. So do you guys want me to put the volume down or up for the stream? Not power. You know, said power's good. Mm. Stream volume down a bit? Or is it good? One for good, Death two for bad. Do you think the volume is fine? Okay. Let's go. Stop touching it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They just showed this uh, on IGN. In the pre-show. This is uh, South of Midnight, I think. No, no, not South of Midnight. Um, oh, what the hell was it? It's that preview game, right? Um, so I just saw Pokemon it in the game? thing. No. You don't actually catch them, you just photograph them and, um, like, partner with them to do things. But they're all completely out in the wild, specific to the areas this that you travel. Like it very well might be lightlier. This is coming to Xbox from the 19th of this month. Yeah. 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 I mean, it doesn't look like it's I mean, a I was game. very close with the name Lightyear, because uh, it's the Creatures of Ava, 
But if you squint hard enough, you can probably make out Learn the word Learn how Creatures Lightyear. of Ava places you in the role of a savior. That's all I'm saying. first look preview on Xbox One. Creatures of Ava. So far, it's been mid for me. Even uh, the Fallout Shelter one. Creatures of Ava, I could probably take it or leave it. I might give it a try, but yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh... Okay, so this is alpha footage, and it may change, so take nothing for granted in this, is what they said. What, why show it? What is this? I do, Chili. I do. Like Griefville. Let's go. We're back into the 360 list. Hey, wait, it's Chucky. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Good guys. It is Chucky. And that's Roblox. What is Chucky doing in Roblox? What in the nothing in your hell? This is Roblox. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. Is this Roblox? You. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like uh, Roblox meets Chucky meets Grief, uh, uh, Roblox. See, told ya. I told you, my kids play this so much, I don't see anything but Roblox on a daily basis. They play Roblox like seven days a week. Okay, okay. It's crazy. They've got all those games there. And all they play is... Uh, I'm looking forward to Sleight of Hand. New game reveal. Okay, okay. Griefville but cross Chucky. My kids will like and that. And it's on Game Pass. My kids will love that. So that's five games down. And now we've still got another 18 minutes, Diablo. Yeah. Stalker? This is just the first half so far. Wait. Oh, oh that's a shaggy. Hogwarts presents. Yeah, it sucks to be you, buddy. <laughs> He was at that moment, he knew he fucked up. <laughs> uh oh. Out of ammo. Kind of looks like uh, Alan Wake. Wait, at this point, you say, like, I took a wrong turn, turn back, and just keep moving. You see how the dude was like proper doing those dance moves. Shake that shoulder, shake that shoulder. Let's go. Definitely looks like Alan Wake. I don't. I think this is Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> I saw the way that thing was dancing along the way. All that was missing was a dance move. Yeah, because this has my attention in Kapulu. The Sinking City 2. Interesting. 2025! Want to dive deeper into this mystery? Discover more about this yeah, long awaited awesome sequel so in maybe our we'll Xbox see Wire interview. Interesting. Another game from Rocksteady. Square Enix, let's go! Walk free and bear the light for others to follow. Good lord, I have, I've not heard Minophilia's voice for ages. That's the point of view. Guys. I don't know, I might give 14 a try. Don't you dare stop. What's going on? Can I do that? Uh, what's going on? These scions will fight until our last breath. Forward, my friends, for freedom and justice. Uh, I might need to. Run. You do know. What's going on. You're not alone in this, don't you? Darkness and light. 
Yeah, I don't Despair know why it's lagging. Though. And hope, as goeth one, so goeth the it's other. Too powerful, it's lagging the stream. Become light, <laughs> become hope. I'm on a gig of the open beta March 21st. Full release on Xbox March 21st. Nice. Said something about uh, April 19th as well. Game World? Another post apocalyptic game. Okay, it's got a weapon wheel. I'm sorry, where are the bangers? Maybe I mean, this, this just said a partner showcase. I'm still expecting bangers. Xbox Series there, X via still, backwards compatibility. Still this is the Stalker Trilogy. Okay, yeah. Probably in uh, upcoming release for Stalker 2. If you're looking for a Stalker-like game on PC, check out Chernobylite. It's really good. This has to be in getting ready for the Stalker 2 release. Yeah. Part of Chernobyl. Yeah. That was supposed to come out in January and they got it pushed back yet again. I mean, ever say, I could do a 14 stream any day you want. <laughs> I'm playing on <laughs> PC, remember? <laughs> Legends of the Zone. GSC Game World brought the and I use an Xbox Stalker controller. trilogy to Xbox in an exclusive Xbox Wire interview. Monster Jam. Now there's a game that I haven't seen in ages. I'm seeing frame drops. And it doesn't look like Gran Turismo, like the cars around popsicle sticks. Twenty twenty four. To Xbox, no game pass. Metaphor. Are we getting a release date for Metaphor? Oh. Another oh. seven. Oh. 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 Episode eight is それ
Oh wait, that's the... What, wave 3? What, what's happening to wave 1? Wait, what? BGM set? Really? So if they're gonna show 3 and 1, what the hell is 2? Oh, uh, here we go. Costumes BGM good. set. Game Pass Ultimate, Xbox. Not Game Pass, Game Pass Ultimate. Yeah. It's the beginning, boys. There's going to be certain things uh -huh. restricted to Game Pass Ultimate only. Uncover what else yeah. the Dark Hour has in store for Game Pass members this year on Xbox Wire. Or it could just be the branding. Announcement and available today. Stalker Original Trilogy. Shadow Drop. Oh, wow. How about that? New game reveal and, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's still and more. The There's DLC. nine minutes, Mahayanist. Of course Persona 3 is the game. Well, the DLC is the game. Really? DNF? Wait, from the DNF universe? Yeah. Isn't this a uh, Project BBQ? That's what it looks like. Is it actually happening, uh, finally? I don't know anything about this. Project BBQ was sick. But it went dark for a long time. Really? This could be the Berserker. Oh the yeah, that's true. But the frame rate sucks, and it's not my PC. They need to fix that frame rate, because that drops down to 30, I can see it. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look bad, it looks like it's a Souls-like game. Don't say horrible things like that, man. Well, you don't like Souls-like games? No! <laughs> Tell you what, though, this is gonna put Rise of the Ronin to shame. Not with those frame rates. <laughs> Did I say that too loud? I mean, it could be like Dragon's Dogma 2. Hey, look, they announced uncapped frame rates, so you're gonna get 31 FPS. Be happy. <laughs> I can't remember if I ever played Dragon Dogma 1. This game doesn't look too bad, though. Yeah. No, it looks alright. I just hope they fix the frame rate. My only the concern is that it's next time. Yep. Kalunga, I don't like next time. Xbox Series X and S, no Game Pass. And why, Zhao, no have you called me to the realm of the living? It is told that there are three great spirits who have denied you. Oh, yeah, this, I this game. My Baba's I got high hopes for this, for this game. Spirits. So, now, Besides what forward. game are you talking about? Tales of Kinzera Zhao takes you on a journey through a land enriched with myth and legend, but torn apart by illness and tragedy. I think he's Greek saying that because I was putting from it the arid as, deadlands, uh, a harsh and unforgiving terrain, to the dense and dangerous forest floor of the woodlands, a place laden with mystery and fear. In your arsenal, you carry your late father's mask, not the mask game. of the moon, utilized best for crowd Persona control, is too the a mask game. of the sun, a chaotic ballet that compels you to engage spirits in melee combat. The mask of the moon, the mask of the sun. You must embrace the dance of the shaman. Persona series Each ability great. gained by the player can be used both well, traversally as well as in the frame of combat. Anyway. For example, take a I really spear. hope this game does Not well. Not only can it be used to activate elements that are out of reach, but also engage and pierce through multiple enemies at once. And with each small victory along After the journey, the death came you will grow and this better is a yourself, love to his father. obtaining powers and tools that allow you to turn the tides of battle uh, I really hope it, it does good. should not sneak up on people, young shaman. We are shamans, healers in a land long past healing. The complexities of grief inspired the foundations of the world of Kinzera. You will be faced with intricate puzzles, arduous obstacles, and deceptive traps that demand both patience and skill to overcome. 
And though the park is fraught with adversity, an even fiercer battle rages within you. Mercy hey, is the only soul that blooms in the land of Kinzera. <laughs> but you can do the this. The only souls like I thing, uh, Ridley. Uh, yeah. The only souls like game that I've tried is uh, Armored Core series. I love my Armored Core, but I also like customizing mechs. So there you go. I think Ben is spot, spot on. The game looks cool. The game looks interesting, but no one's gonna buy it. So? Yeah. I agree, Ben. No one's yeah. gonna buy it. I think the game sends a very good story, though, because of its, you know, it's love letter to his father who passed. I hope it'll sell well enough, I'll put it that way. Now, what is this? Strategy type game. Is this a raw? I don't think so. No, can't be a raw. industrial looking from what a Ra does. Okay, and the colors change to the fact that July 25th. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's going to be on Game Pass. PC Game Pass only. $17? Help me! I mean, it's like $12.99 here in the UK. I'm picking up a tournament. Okay, this looks interesting. This is an old one, right? I think so. I I remember seeing this not too long ago. Oh wait, this is that weird Capcom game, isn't it? I think I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Capcom presents. Yep. It's weird. It still looks like a PS3 game. With like the smoothness of PS4 graphics, maybe. Gear Six won't be here. That's the best party. That's going to be on the Summer Showcase. Oh, it looks like you can do like base building. Or defenses or something like that. I guess you can attack that now. Filtering the A. Yeah. They always come out at night mostly. I know I said that wrong. Yep. Look at Alex. That's an interesting art style. Oh, and you can position and control villagers like Dynasty Warriors inside of the battle. That's cool. Yeah, it's power defense meets Dynasty Warriors. So far, I've seen two that I'm really looking forward to. Frostpunk 2 and the Fallout Shelter looking game. So not the Stoker Trinity that was released today. Um, me and War Games don't get along. I stopped playing COD because of my time in the military. <laughs> Sugami. This is coming to Game Pass. Okay. This year.
Learn how Kanitsugami Path of the Goddess mixes action and real-time strategy in an exclusive Xbox Wire piece. Path of the Goddess. That's it. No, that can't be all of them. That's it. That is it. Sleight of hand, that's the one I can think of. Okay, three. Uh, Persona 3 Reloaded Expansion Pass. Mitsugami Path of... Oh, absolutely, Diablo. The variety is outstanding with all this. So, Unknown 9 looked okay. Nothing special, but looked okay. Sleight of Hand, eh. Altars is the Fallout Shelter one. Creatures of mm -hmm. Ava, eh. My kids will like the Roblox. Sinking City was okay. <laughs> Let's go, Final Fantasy XIV. Stalker Trilogy, that's... If you like that sort of thing, might be a bit too old for some. Monster Jam... First Berserker was good, but that has severe frame rate issues. Uh, Persona 3, if you like it, you're going to like it. Tales of Kanzara. Frostpunk, not for me. And Kunitsu. I don't know. I'm liking Sleight of Hand and The Altars. Why is Persona um... gross, Steve? <laughs> I mean, so far from what I've seen of Persona 3 Reload, I'm actually liking it. What's wrong with Persona 3? <laughs> Back to playing Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> 4 was amazing. Persona 4 Golden was brilliant. That scene at the where they went camping with the school, and Chie had to cook. Oh, that was that was I, I died on that scene, literally. I died. That was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in a video game. Period. <laughs> that scene is legendary. Because my dudes thought they ah. hit it big with the girls cooking. I'd give it maybe a six or a seven out of ten. That's it. This is this is the partner preview. Uh, I'd probably give this a five personally. I that mean, was a five for me. Uh, you, you you have to look at the fact that yes, there's games for everybody. You have Final Fantasy fourteen for online. You've got strategy. You've got first and. Or not first. Uh, third person cinematic. Uh, you have side scroller. You have kid versions of stuff like the Roblox. You have beautifully, uh, you know, graphically entertaining stuff in Creatures of Ava. You have nostalgia for the Stalker original I trilogy. I expected at least a third party big title there. Yeah, I was surprised that there wasn't a big one. I, I mean, unless they're considering to, for some of the three. You know, to finish off with a bang, uh, Kunitsu isn't that game. They, you know, no. if they they kind of went with mid, 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 and oh, like games that are old, Stalker Original Trilogy are old games that you can probably pick up one way or another. Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen has been out for ten years. I know it's just coming onto Xbox, but it's been there for ten years. Persona Three right. is already out. Uh, you know. The Roblox first Berserker dropped off the map. Ro Roblox is Roblox. I don't know. I was, I'm disappointed. Yeah. I'm disappointed. Um, I expected at least one really big major title. Even if they announced... I don't, I don't know. I just expected one third-party big title. Oh, yeah. Sinking City 2 and uh, the Stalker original trilogy were both first-person point-of-view games. And they didn't even get a Silk Song. Or did they? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't That's know. my opinion. Yeah, give it a six. Uh, 
Well, Stalker 2 is a first party title, Jay. Uh, Monster Jam, huh? That's as much game of the year as Phone Stars is game of the year. <laughs> this is making me wonder what Microsoft is doing in Japan. I have no idea. I genuinely I mean, no you idea. can't really say Silk Song would save it because we don't know very much about Silk Song, do we? I mean, sure, it would have been a big double uh, A title. See, they needed to after the kind of negative reception that they've had recently. They needed to come out guns blazing, and they just didn't. This is true. They didn't. Uh, you know, this yeah. isn't to me. This isn't them coming out, gung ho, guns blazing. This isn't them coming firing on all cylinders. I know it's a partner preview, so they can only go with what the partners are creating. But I don't know. I don't know. I I, I expected more. I expected better. There definitely could have been a lot of things better, that's for sure. Maybe they need new partners. Uh, but it's just like, I don't know. Per Microsoft, Japan is the fastest growing market. What's that? Uh, Susano says, per Microsoft, Japan is the fastest growing market. Well, yeah, obviously. If you have 0% market share... And suddenly you've got 5%. That's a yeah, huge it's... gain compared to everywhere else, right? <laughs> I agree. I agree. See, when someone says, and I've, I've had this argument with people before, where they've said, you know, oh, Japan is their fastest growing market. But if they had a 1% market share, and they said they've, you know, they've doubled their market share, that just means they've gone to 2%. Without anything... Uh, numerical there's nothing to compare it to no 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 would I, I i agree i agree i'm not saying that i'm just saying that they they should have been at these companies saying give me something good anything you know they could have shown us a bit more od Something, you know, actual gameplay of OD. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like these two down here, Persona 3 and Reload and the first Berserker are all right. 14, mm -hmm. I'm obviously biased towards. Right. Sleight of hand looked okay. I mean, if we go back. This is that first game. I forgot what it's called. Then. Sleight of hand. No, or no, uh, unknown, unknown, unknown awakening. Night. Yeah, unknown awakening. In my experience, so this the looks greatest okay, harm often but... comes from the best intentions. The cycle is starting again. How I don't know. It, 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 it doesn't the vanity of the night. Look at the frame rate. When there isn't a path. But to this be found, one I was interested in. Make one. It looks interesting. It's like Assassin's Creed mixed with, um... Oh, what was the other game you said? You mentioned another one. Gucci would show you a weird cinematic just to confuse you even more. Yeah, I don't doubt that, Vanya. So that was cool. You've been here before. I won't say that the showcase times, was a flop. And so shall you be here again. But it is not and as strong as it could have been. They better hope they have a good hand. Hmm. Over there! She's here! Okay, this is the sleight of hand game. So it's altars that I was excited for, not sleight of hand. Like this if is for CGI. Wants to play. No, yeah, no gameplay. So what's the point of even showing? 
I never understand why companies show games that are CGI only. Like, what's the point? Tells the story of Yandols, a simple miner who survived a crash landing on a hostile planet. Of course, planet. you would call it a flop down here. He quickly realizes that what was supposed to be a lifetime job opportunity. I'm gonna call it a mid. Turns into a desperate fight for his not life. A, yeah, I can agree not, with that. Not, not a total win. Yan will need to handle a large but there mobile was a few base designed to be operated by an entire team enough, of qualified personnel. Enough. I think Even all worse, except for two the of them, Yan on we got dates of when each and every one of these are releasing and on which platform. Escaping so the I will give them that. Is crucial for survival. Project Dolly. Despite his best efforts. Yan simply lacks the time and But yeah, this is something that I'm quite excited for. On his own. Like I said, it, it looks like Fallout Shelter, but it also but has the like out Yan in the world aspects, on, which is kind of home interesting. To a mysterious substance called like, well, I generally, uh, With its use like it, and the help of the quantum computer on board, Yan is able to create alternative versions of himself. And despite his trolling for the most part, he's actually uh, the alters. Yeah, I know. Down to earth, people. Leave my marriage. Unlike some others that we know. Verge of failure. I love. Yeah, that's just show. Yeah, I, I really think that Alters is definitely going to be somewhat of a sleeper. It doesn't have the charm of Kenner. No. It doesn't have the quality, it doesn't have the polish, it doesn't have the flair of Kenner. I don't know, I think maybe the creatures of Ava is just throwing me off with the art style. Where is that text that you put down? Gameplay footage is alpha and subject to change, may change depending on the platform. Like, so what's the point in showing anything if it's not even final form? If this is, I mean, this could all change. <laughs> That is true. Literally everything here can change. Yeah. Yeah. Vault fall oh, yeah, my kids will yeah, My kids will love that. I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. You. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's available today. I need to tell him. To For the Roblox, out. yeah. Now, I don't know what to make of... Uh, Jonathan, yeah. yeah. Moonlight Ace was saying that he was watching the Xbox on YouTube and all the ponies just hating on the comments. Well, yeah. It's like they don't have any pets. Clearly the best game yeah. um, presentation. It was pretty Queen. short, Addy Islam. Uh, um, 30 minutes. Follow. Yeah, 30 minutes, uh, 14 things shown, all third, uh, or excuse me, not third party, uh, partner program. Um, I wouldn't say it was a hit. I agree with Chaos, it was mid. It's not as strong as it could have been. Oh, nice. There you go, folks. Starter edition available through Game Pass Ultimate Perks between March 21st and April 19th if you start. So that gives you one month free access to the game. To the official game. Yeah. Now, let me tell you a little secret. A little secret that you do need to know. So make sure you're listening. This is a scam for the most part. If you buy this, you lose the right to play for free up until Stormblood. You will have to buy the game after that. Because this is this is paid. Very cheeky. Mm, yeah, it definitely is. But it does give you the base game for free. 
And I don't know what else it gives you for free, to be fair. But depending on what it is they give you in the starter edition, because I don't know what else they do. But uh, once you pay or sign up to a fully licensed uh, account, you lose the ability to use the free trial account. And the free trial account allows you to play uh, the base game, Heaven's Ward, Stormblood, unlimited hours, uh, all the way up to level 70, for as right. much as you like. After that, you need to pay. You can't progress. You hit a hard brick wall. There are certain restrictions, like uh, in-game chat is restricted in multiple ways, so to stop bots and RMT, RMT being real money trade uh, bots. So that's deliberately done for that reason, because you know bots can just create multiple accounts for free and do what they want to do. Uh, but overall, you've got almost full reign to do what you need. Yep, that is true. Problem with PlayStation is the dev costs. People buy their games. Not enough, Bonaya. Not enough. Even Jim Ryan said, not enough people are buying games on PlayStation. Your daddy said so. So if your daddy is mm -hmm. saying, I think you need to listen to him. Never thought about this before, but is Final Fantasy XIV even easy to play on a console? Uh, I play full-time with a controller, so yes. It is. I could see it. Um, I just don't understand why Xbox isn't throwing bags at the smaller Japanese publishers like Falcom or Gust. We don't know, uh, Jay. That's a damn good question. Uh, Falcom have announced that they're not making any games for Xbox. There just isn't a big enough uh, platform market share for them. For them to release the game, they don't believe that they can get a return of interest if they port it over. Remember how I was saying console sales are important when it comes to third-party publishers? And a lot yep. of you said that I'm a fucking idiot. There you go. Falcon was one of the first to announce that they're just skipping Xbox entirely. Specifically because of that, yep. If enough people are buying games on PlayStation, then they wouldn't have to start putting their games on PC. It's as simple as that. That is true, Addy. That is very true. What's that? That if people are buying games on the PlayStation, then they wouldn't have to start putting their games on PC. Uh, I think it's a double-edged sword, but I think it would have delayed it at least. But putting it on PC just means they can double dip. That's true as well, because look at GTA. Most of their games are delayed on PC, like up to a year. But they sell well in Japan, Jay. They do. They sell oh, well in Japan, and uh, that's enough. Japan, Korea, yeah. wherever. On PlayStation, they sell. Microsoft's market share, even in those countries, are worse. Right? <clears throat> I expected to see 16 here. No, no lie. 16, I expected to see here. I'm, you know, I, I've heard the rumors that uh, 16 is coming to Xbox, but this is where I expected to see it, and it wasn't here. No, I think 16 was part of the FF7 remake deal. No, it wasn't. It was different. Uh, this is just the exclusive for Final Fantasy 7, which appears to confirm what had perhaps been widely assumed but not confirmed until now uh, when it was released in -in 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 -in, remake last week PS5 conclusive exclusives for at least three months meaning it's possible PC players might have a relatively short wait until the thing Sigourney the Trilogy as a console exclusive is a feather in PlayStation cap back in the same console generation for the play original PlayStation Sony Computer Entertainment had few franchises of its own and in order to find its place in the very competitive video game industry we sought to win the hearts and minds of the third party developers like Square. And you know that, that that's the key here. When Sony first came into the gaming world they had no first party games. They just built those amazing relationships with third party. 
and third part, and they're you know for this year especially, they're relying on that relationship with third party to deliver them great games. And so far, it hasn't failed them, outside of Home Stars. Arthur, what do you mean? Uh, what will sell well? Because yeah, sixteen sold three million copies, and remake sold three point five million in three days. But it took them four years to hit seven million sold, just on that one alone. Yeah, but what and Xbox I don't games do, have hit them? Rebirth. How many? Well, Starfield. One. The average PlayStation game sells between three and five million. Uh, what is what is Xbox selling? Like that's what Arthur is saying. That Xbox just doesn't hit those numbers. You can count the amount of ones. People keep telling me Starfield, Forza Horizon 5, and then they go dry like the Sahara Desert. I don't mean to sound negative. I'm just being realistic here. No, no, no. What he's saying is I'm just true. reading the comments. I'm just reading the comments. Uh, Addy bought Rebirth on PS5, didn't pay $70. Um, it takes everything that Remake does and improves on it in quite a number of ways but other core gameplay mechanics like the gold saucer where i'm at right now it's just gutted it is so bare bones dumbed down i'm almost tempted to want to never play the game again that's how bad it is and i'm a huge final fantasy fan then you shouldn't sell it Go sell the game. I'm very tempted to. Don't you, don't push it. <laughs> don't push it. You should definitely sell it. If you don't enjoy it and it's uh, bugging you, you should 100% sell it. Never play a game you don't like. I, on the other hand, I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, Jonathan, Rebirth is 40 hours for the storyline, 100 hours of side content about 200 150 to 200 hours to platinum uh day one ibsy is the square enix community manager ibs mm -hmm. uh banaya again starfield was available as part of a subscription so that's really not a fair comparison I'll tell you what is a fair comparison. Well, it's not a fair Jade, comparison. Jade, did you ever play the uh, original back in 1997? How many copies did Horizon Forbidden West sell in their second year once it went into the subscription? You already know the answer because it was released during the leaks on how it was completely bastardized to the point where Sony regretted putting it onto the subscription service and they had to cancel their second year projections because they couldn't even hit that projection by 1%. Uh, Joshua, Spider-Man 2 needed to sell close to 10 million copies, which they've only just recently hit, to even break even. I Starfield broke... Starfield broke even and surpassed and made a profit just with pre-orders alone. And not to mention Starfield is about to get a huge bolster with the DLC dropping sometime this month. Wow, PlayStation fans hurting, boy. <laughs> Wait, Don't what? buy this. Sony is playing with us real fans who bought the game back in 2020. It's a betrayal. We feel stabbed in the back. Yeah. Don't support this. Don't buy. Damn. Let them take a loss and regret that decision. PlayStation 5 will be always the definitive platform to play games. I'm sorry, it's not anymore. The PC will be the best place to play it. At 4K60. Yep. Bye bye.
Where are all the Xbox fanboys who were insulting me and defending Phil Spencer after the Xbox podcast? Final Fantasy Remake Trilogy might never come to Xbox. And that's fine. Yeah. But don't worry. Uh, you have some indies on the old games on Game Pass. Uh, I wish he just decided to just sell his Xbox and go buy a PlayStation. Yeah. Between him, uh, Warhammer Dave, and Tim, they are literally... Between the three of them are reasons I just don't want to use Twitter anymore. And that Anna Anison person. Who? I don't know. Her name is Anna A N A S H I N or something like that. I've not seen them. Eh, they pop up on my feed every once in a while. Yeah, hopefully they don't pop up on mine. <laughs> uh, this is the one silk knife that said that half a uh, Starfield is coming. Yeah, and I don't see it, especially not after Phil just made that announcement. Indiana Jones and Starfield are not part of the the forecoming. And he did say that, you know, the games, he can't ever definitively say that they're never going to come. But they aren't coming now. Ben, if that's how you feel, then buy a PlayStation. I know you've already got a PlayStation, but I'm just saying in general. Why are you spending your time crying on social media... For something that's not going to change. I mean, they make themselves look a, you know, sad, pathetic pulps of human flesh that just, I don't know. It, it's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. I get criticizing Xbox, but the level that they've gone to is just... I don't know, it's like someone, Sachin Adela or Phil Spencer went over and shagged their wife, got them pregnant, had the baby, and then came back years later and said, you've raised my child. Wild Harpy, who's crying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I agree, Jay, you know, the console tribalism is a joke. It's okay to criticize, but if you're oh, right. a gamer, you should own all consoles. I 100% agree with that. Bonaya, you heard me. I take nothing back. That's the level wait, of aggression I'm seeing. Which part? From uh, those three. Everywhere I oh, see yeah, them yeah. post, it's like just wine, they wine, wine, awesome. wine, yeah. wine. It takes a lot for me to actually block people. I don't have many blocked. But it takes a lot for me to block someone. But, the, you know, those two are getting very close. I will say, uh, Oh No, It's Alex was 100% right. The cost of video games is going up because the companies like, you know, the big heads at PlayStation are talking about how the budgets of the games are blooming. And because of that, they are wanting to charge $100 a game to pass on the price that they can't control, or rather that they can't control that they're not controlling, onto the customers and consumers. And in 100% fairness, I can see why they're doing it. I disagree that they are doing it. They need to change the budgets of their games, if that's the case. Just make good games and they sell. Exactly. Increasing the price is not, the, you know, will only make people buy less. If you want to make good sales, release games that are good. Day one. With no bugs. And you're good. But what do you think about uh, Dragon's Dogma 2? We didn't really talk about that today. Um, Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to run on consoles uncapped 30 fps or thereabouts you might if you're lucky get uh to 31 32 digital foundry have said that there's a good chance that 
because of the uncapped nature, Xbox could run it at full speed with VRR, which won't be possible on the PS5. There's a chance that it can do that. that. So, (laughs) Arthur. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, if my channel was actually doing well, I'd I'd give away one. If it was bringing in like the money, I'd like it to bring. Yeah, I'd give away a PS Five. Easy. You guys are awesome. You turn it turn up week in week out. Xbox partner get coming to Game Pass. Sleight of Hand, Altars, Creatures of Ava. So these are the six that are going to Game Pass. And the only one that's different is the Persona 3 Reload yeah, expansion. Yeah, so that one pass, is going to be Ultimate, isn't Ultimate. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Altars and Frostpunk 2. And I have Persona 3 Reload, so I'm going to you know, beat it before the expansion is out. So that way I can you know, be ready for the expansion when it does release. Ah, uh, Susanna, I've tried multiple times. I'm not too much of a Xbox nut for most of them to invite me onto their shows or do stuff together. Uh, Did you ever reach out to uh, C Money and Doodle? I haven't had the chance yet. Hit them, I will. Okay. But the majority <laughs> of the others just don't want to uh, interact. Mainly right, because right. I'm probably going to say what they're saying is wrong and whatnot, but... Uh, the Alters game, Bounia, was the one that looks like the Fallout Shelter, with some sort of outside world stuff, too. Oh god, hyped. Fuck no. <laughs> when I'm wrong, you own it and say you're wrong. If the team credits focusing on a single platform for their success, then you celebrate the success. Final Fantasy VII Re- Rebirth is fantastic, and Queen's Blood. I mean, I can't fault Final Fantasy Square Enix team for all of these guys. releasing on one platform. Only on PlayStation. God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, Days Gone, Horizon, The Last of Us Part Two, and Spider Man Two. <laughs> Jesus. Was the Last of Us Part 2 released on PC? Not yet. Just Part 1, right? As far as I know, yeah. Part 1 and the Miles Morales part, yeah. Uh, yeah. Final Fantasy XIV only sold... 14 million across PS4 and PS5. That's still a lot of copies being sold. <laughs> it's not only. I know their base is like 150 million, but that's still a lot of bloody comp- games being sold. Although it would have been more impressive if it was like 25 million. It just shows that the demand for those, you know, those JRPGs just aren't there. The younger mm-hmm. generation just don't care for them. Now, if this was Agreed. 10 years ago, that number would have been way higher. Way higher. No, not the Death Stranding lookalike game. I'll be honest, Addy, I'm not really digging Queen's Blood. I see a lot of people going crazy over it. It's all right. It's not anything special. I created a deck like way back, uh, I don't know, second set of cards that I was able to get, a uh, couple of the special edition ones, and there's only one time that I actually had to change up for a second deck so far. I literally just beat everybody I come across like two to three tries. So do you think I'm going to feature in his video? Because he's attacking every single Xbox creator out there. I expected I an announcement from Howard as well. 
but that didn't come either. Do you think I'm gonna oh. make a appearance in his video? Damn, bold Alpha Wolf with that five gifted subs yet again. Alpha One is back on Terminus Sec. I'm not gonna try to pronounce that right now. But zero. Terminus Acro. Terminus Acro, right. Diablo <laughs> Moza, Crafty Martin, GT UK. That's a new and name McChug. I haven't seen before. And McChugs, I've seen before. Thank you very much, Bold Alpha Wolf. I appreciate you, my dude. But yeah, do you think I'm going to make an appearance in his uh, Salt video going after Xbox fans? Mm. No, I don't think so. That is Power Boss. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, he had possibly. <laughs> He had to set up quite hastily after he finished with work, Bold Alpha, so my cam isn't on for this part today's stream. But yes, that is me. Yeah, Bold, the plan was for me to uh, get on around five and set everything up. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I received a phone call talking about redundancies, so that didn't go the way I was hoping it to go for today. And so I spent Wait. way too long on that phone call. What do you mean, finally? I bring him on every so often. Nick's his employee here. I know some of... I know of some Sony games coming to PC this year. Tealu Part 2, God of War Ragnarok, Demon Souls. Demon Souls is coming to PC! No way! Yeah? And Gran Turismo 7. That makes sense because of the PlayStation VR headset. I mean, you have been missing from a few streams. Maybe that's what he's talking mm -hmm. about. Oh, did you make a video on the whole uh, Nintendo Yuzu court case? Not yet. That was supposed to be today. After the other video. Ah. Gotcha, gotcha. But there's no notifications left for today, so I'll post it tomorrow. Sure, sure. So you who actually uh, deserved it. They're assholes. I have, I have not been MIA. I've been here, Bold Alpha. I only missed, what, two live streams? AKPC Demon's Souls soon. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, if you That'd like... Uh, good. On a serious note, guys, if anyone is using um, or has used Yuzu as an emulator, Yuzu were actually keeping track of your IP the moment you yep. booted up a game. And Nintendo now has all of that data and they are fine combing it to see who was actually using pirated Nintendo software. And they were, they've said that they may be getting in touch with people on a legal front it's uh, quite scary and retarded as to why user would do such a thing without our permission that is a direct violation um of GD no no just gdpr in general uh gdpr which is a global uh requirement because of eu if you provide your pro uh, software anywhere that's within the european union you need to comply by a GDPR rules, which pretty much they yeah. say you need to inform the people of what their data is being used for, how it's being used, and you can only hold on to that data for a, while it's necessary. And they were holding on to years worth of data for no reason. So they I are in huge violation. I don't think do anything with it because of that. I don't know. I don't know. This because, is Nintendo. Because... Now, personally, myself, I have used Yuzu and Citra in the past. And the only thing that it allowed to do was connect uh, certain multiplayer games, not on, like, servers, but, like, private LAN connections type of deal. So the only person who has your IP, other than the program itself, is the person that you're giving it to so that you can connect to them for certain aspects of certain games, like Pokemon. No, no. The moment 
uh, you download Yuzu and set it up. During the setup, it records your IP address. Yes. The program does, yes. But I'm saying anyone outside, the only person who would have your IP address for your Yuzu outside of the program is whoever you give it to. Yeah. But that's now in Nintendo's hands. Uh, right. Susano. Question. And this is what I was going to say to Vaf in Discord yesterday, but I couldn't find the right analogy. Is owning a knife illegal? I'm going to specify the knife. Is owning a kitchen knife illegal? No, of course not. But stabbing someone in the chest or the forehead with it is illegal. Considering yeah. you've just killed them. So well, it would having be Yuzu if not isn't else. illegal. But if it's used in a certain way to run certain things in order to gain illegal access to certain stuff, then it becomes illegal. But on its own, it's not illegal. We knew someone was getting sued after Power World, let's be honest. <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> needed to go after someone. They were too worked up. Yeah. Hey, it's the, it's the easiest one I could think of that makes it clear cut. A knife on its own is not illegal. Upon but a human being grabbing it and running after God someone and stabbing them in the face is illegal. God damn it, chaos. I'm just saying. Uh, knife, clear cut, bad pun. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> he got it. Uh, you did on Twitter? Are you sure? I mean, I get a lot of random people messaging me here. They're all fake, though. I asked the Yuzu cases to Home Depot selling the irons and center blocks and people stealing. Now, see, here's the thing that um, I want to propose to everybody in the chat, okay, about the whole Nintendo suing Yuzu part, okay? Nintendo themselves, and this has been proven with at least one game that I know of, a Mario game, has taken a ROM that somebody else owned and put on the internet, and they put it onto their online game store and marketed as their own. And it is a clear copy and paste of the ROM, not their own cartridge, which is baffling because they own the cartridge, right? No. So no. technically... You don't own the games you buy. You only no, own, no, no. You only own the no, no, no. license to the game. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about Nintendo themselves. They own the game. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the person who licensed it. But rather than taking the game that they own and uploading the ROM onto, or not the ROM, uh, uploading the game to their online store for the Nintendo Online, they took a ROM that somebody copied and used that instead, which is a clear, blatant ripoff. So now can Nintendo be sued by the person who took their ROM? In fact, I'll put up a guide of how to emulate Nintendo's games. Uh, there's no reason why they should do that, Bold Alpha. Um, you know, Yuzu did a lot of stupid things. Like, on the face front of it, emulation is not illegal. But they went too far. Even with that uh, stipulation, Bold Alpha, there's others like Ryujinx that do the same thing. They have a guide of how to emulate the games. The problem that Nintendo's having is that it was bypassing the Nintendo hardware to get prod keys. And that's where the gray area lies. And the fact that Yuzu themselves were profiting by selling early access copies of their builds through the Patreon. See, that was the only thing. That right there. Yeah. The CD, the product keys is irrelevant. They don't care about that. They've got no grounds yeah. for that at all. Because yes, they were I'm, making money and not giving any to Nintendo. It's the fact that they 
monetized the emulation. And even then, right? Even then, Yuzu would have won if they stayed in court. But the problem is Nintendo would have bled them dry long before the de decision would have been made. I agree, Ben. Them closing the Citra emulator is more of a bigger blow than the actual Yuzu emulator. Hey, Lion, how are you? And yes, we did see the news about um, Starfield potentially going November, December to PS5, which I still don't believe that rumor. It, it's not going to happen. See, I don't believe this for a second. Final Fantasy VII producer Yoshinori Kitase tells me Rebirth seamless open world is possible only because of development focused on a single platform. Yeah, I don't believe that for a split second. If they either. released, if they made it for the PC as well, it would have been just fine. Yep. So that's just horse shit. And notice how they're not going after the loading screens when you fast travel either. It takes a good five seconds for some place to load up. Ah, uh, Tim Dog, Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Good old Timmy. Well, if you actually look at that, Sanchez, they had the copy of the early release game uh, for Tears of the Kingdom a week before when the leaks all came out on the internet. But Yuzu itself did not have the game running uh, day one, it took them three days after the game's launch before it was officially working on the Yuzu emulator. Hmm. What should we do, folks? Man, this is crazy. Right, and this is clearly what I was worried about and why I felt a 30 FPS optional cap should be included. The frame rate is basically 30 FPS, but with poor frame pacing. So it'll to look much worse. VRR can save the Xbox version, at least, but PS5 looks poor in motion. What game is that for? Dragon's Dogma 2. Ah. Hey, see, I told you, 31 FPS. Bob, are you sure you sent me anything? Because I didn't get anything from you. Unless you're dubs. I don't think so, Jay. Uh, Starfield PS5 port, I don't think it's going to go to PS5, especially with the backlash that they were having over all of the game mechanics. Uh, that PlayStation... Users on Twitter were screaming over, you know, the loading screens, the bad gameplay mechanics, the core loop is not fun, you know, everything that they were saying about the game. So even if it does go to the PS5, it's going to sell less than 100,000 copies. Also, don't forget. It, it, there's no point in it going to the PS5. Also, don't forget, like, um, Sea of Thieves took 14 months to port. Hi-Fi Rush probably started around the same time. As of the PlayStation, sorry, the Xbox podcast, no development for Starfield or Indiana Jones had started or was in place or un was undergoing. There was zero development. The old code base that they stopped years ago for PlayStation, that's dead, they, that's dead. Because that code base has changed enough for it to be completely useless. So they would need Very to true. start refactoring that game from ground zero in order to port it. It would take, from the podcast, probably a year and a half at least to get that game on PlayStation up and running. Um, Sony aren't going to give them the PlayStation 5 Pro dev kits. They've already said. So it wouldn't even be able to utilize the PS5 Pro if that's the case. 
So they're probably if that was going to happen, they would probably wait until the PS5 Pro came out officially, then start development. So we're looking at maybe two years from now. Two years from now, uh, the Xbox Series X2 is going to be out, or whatever it's going to be called. So while we're enjoying Blade and all the other cool games like Halo, Gears, and whatnot, it's okay for, you know, even if it does come out, I don't think it will, but even if it does come out and they get to play two, three-year-old games, at that point, who cares? Uh, Lion wanted you to remind everybody about your interview coming up. That is true. I was supposed to do that. I was supposed to do that. I'm awful. Do you know? <laughs> I am really <laughs> fucking awful because I was supposed to do that in my last video that I uploaded and I totally forgot. And that is well, disgustingly bad of me. Well, I am that's sorry. why I'm reminding you now. That is really bad. So I did a po for those of you that are interested in like getting started with YouTube or just doing anything with YouTube, I did a podcast uh, interview with Lion, um, where I basically go through and talk about what it is you need to get started, how to get started. It's it's a really cool, informative uh, interview in, you, you know, just talking about the backgrounds, the problems, the good things that come with YouTube, the bad things that come with YouTube, all the issues that can derive from it. So it's definitely a good watch, a good listen, depending on where you actually go to view it but i'm trying to get the links to post there you go there are three links uh, you've got the spotify you've got the amazon and i have no clue what the first one is but those are the three <laughs> links definitely go check it out drop him a like and follow i had a really good time during that interview um i promise i'm gonna make a note now that i will also uh put it on my next video as well to let people know but yeah it's not it, it wasn't anything malicious i've just had a really rough few days um first of the youtube channel i've just had a really rough so, few days with uh you know yesterday dubs. i was supposed to stream uh i didn't stream because my family doctor passed away my aunt's on death's door um, got some bad news from work, which today mm. was pretty much uh, almost formalized when I got a call about my redundancy options. Uh, mm. So, yeah, the last few days have been really weird. So that's why I wasn't streaming yesterday, in case anyone hasn't seen my video. So yesterday was just a really, really mm. screwed up day for me mentally uh, through just all the bad news. And, well, I was here for you, my today. So, so uh, Dubs, yeah, um, the Xbox stream today, well, he makes his note. <laughs> uh, Chaos gave it a five. I gave it a six. I'm going to give it a six. Maybe a seven. Maybe a seven. No, but, no way a seven. Um, I'll give it a six because of 14. It, it was a little underwhelming for what they could have shown and what they needed to show. It wasn't a bad showcase. But they didn't have big, impactful games that they could have. Uh, no move on the new uh, move. Uh, we found a few properties that really suited our needs. But uh, we're having problems with the landlords. It's really weird. It's a four-bedroom place that we're looking for. And the places we found, they don't want any more than four people moving in. It's not a shared property. They want a family of four to move into a four bedroom, which makes no sense. So if the couple, if the husband and wife or whatever the couple is, go into one room, the two kids go into a individual rooms, that leaves a bedroom spare. But I, I'm not here to... Yeah, it makes no it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Um, the only reason why I gave it a six, to be honest and to be fair, okay, I started at a five, and I went down a point to a four because not a lot of those games I'm interested in. There is three or four of them that I am interested in. So you know, those four games pushed it back up to a five. 
Um, none of the games were big bangers that I expected to be shown, but it is a partner showcase. So I didn't, you know, go above or below helping or hurting the platform. The games that were shown, what I liked, I really liked. What I didn't like, I do think that somebody will. But what pushed me to go from a five to a six is out of all 14 games shown, there was only two of them that had future dates that we didn't have a projection of when they're coming out. Every other game that was there is, um, it, it gave us a date this year, but not only did it give us a date this year, except for two of them, but also which day it's actually coming out. Uh, Xbox Quackers, yeah, I'm uh, I'm in a better mood today than I was yesterday. Let's just say that. Uh, I don't want any more kids. Uh, <laughs> Snowy, I've already got five. That's enough. My daughter is in Cyprus. Um, she went to live over there, but yeah, five's enough. Spider Man, where are you going? Was just asking so I know when to expect a period with no content. Uh, you will know definitely when I'm moving. I will be making at least a short video, even if it is with my phone, just to let you guys know that I'm going radio silent. During that period, I'm going to have a few videos hopefully set up to at least take me through uh, a week. And then... What I'm planning to do during my lights out period, if I can, is actually, if there's any news that's worth talking about, I'm pretty much going to do an Asmongold, sit outside, get my camera perked <laughs> up with my phone, and just talk through the camera. Because I can plug my mic into my phone that I'm using now, so it does support that, and just do a couple of uh, videos that way. The streams will obviously not happen until I'm all set up again, but at least I'll right. be able to get some videos out. Uh, and to end off what I was saying before, the last thing um, that was pushing me from a six to possibly be a seven is every game that was shown was very clear cut and dry of which platform it's coming to, whether it's Xbox, PC, uh, Xbox Game Pass, or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Or PC Game Pass uh, only. So that was another thing that was a plus for me. It, they were very clear about what game is coming to what platform. Uh, Sanchez, I'm currently searching for the secret PlayStation Showcase in the Great Circle. <laughs> and uh, once me and my power Indy find it, and we can excavate it out of the Great Circle, we'll, uh, we'll present it to all of you. <laughs> Tatha, sit outside. You mad? It's freezing. Uh, I'm diabetic. I'm never. I'm never cold ever. Although I do want to say that you know, the one good thing so far, despite all the stress I've been under with this whole moving thing, my sugar levels have actually come down to uh, pre-diabetes. So, if that continues, I may actually be cured from diabetes over the next uh, six months. So that's amazing. At least uh, for me. At least anyway. that again. So is Reforge. Hmm? I said Unleashed is at it again, and so is Reforge. Uh, Unleashed is an idiot. Yeah, so at but least we knew for me, this. That's a good thing. Um, I'm really happy with that health wise. I've been working really, really hard. And hey, look, look at it this way. If I do get made redundant, you're all going to be getting like two or three videos a day. Until that <laughs> sub count gets from 6'6 six, six to like 10k. And then once that happens, I'm still going to be doing three videos a day. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Snowy, yeah, it does. I mean, I remember when my sugar levels were around 24, 25. This was, uh, and it was, I think it was like, what? The 
the height of December when it was freezing outside, we're talking like sub one degrees. And I had to have all the windows open in my sitting room and a fan on just to keep me cool. Like this room was like the middle of like the North Atlantic. <laughs> it was like sub-zero temperatures in here, but that was the only way I could uh, stay cool. Like no one could come into this room, not the kids, not the wife, not anyone. It was my own little ice cave. <laughs> Yeah, Jay, it seems like the remakes, remake, rebirth, and whatever the third game is going to be are not going to come to Xbox. It is a huge blow, but they are not the best games ever. Uh, I will say this as a huge Final Fantasy fan, a huge Final Fantasy franchise fan myself. Remake was a nice breath of fresh air, but the loss of the turn base made Final Fantasy VII lose a lot of its charm. Uh, the fact that you only got to play through Midgar was a huge blow. Yes, they made it nice, big, and beautiful, but you didn't even get to play as Red 13 in your party towards the end of the game. And a lot of people were turned off because of that. With Rebirth, so far from what I've seen, they've taken everything that Remake did and did well, and they improved upon it, but there's a lot of filler and backtracking that they did uh, game mechanics wise for other things that have really taken Rebirth in a backwards direction. Uh, the graphics, I'm not going to even touch on because they're supposed to be coming out with a, uh, a patch for the performance mode dips in FPS uh, from the 60s solid locks performance mode. Uh, because the resolution has been dropping below 720p. I've seen it myself. I played the game myself. Um, but I'm also playing on quality mode, which is locked at 30, but uh, it does freeze. I, I have noticed that in certain movie clips. The gameplay is uh, um, perfectly fine. Uh, the input lag is an issue with 30 FPS uh, quality mode, though. Um, and the biggest hype that FF7 Re Rebirth to me that I was excited for was the Gold Saucer, and I am disappointed because they gutted the hell out of it. All right. So let me dissect a few things you said there. Number one, Re Final Fantasy VII Remake isn't designed to appeal to yesteryear's generation. It's designed to appeal to the modern generation. Agreed. So all that nostalgia that you have, they've already done away with that by saying that this is changing the storyline. So don't expect it to be the same. Don't expect it to right. follow the story one to one. So you know, comparing it to the original just doesn't make sense. It's going to have similarities. The story is going to follow the same kind of flow. But mm -hmm. for all we know, Aerith may never die. And if she doesn't die, that's the whole ancient storyline changed entirely. Because Sephiroth Absolutely. is no longer the last Ancients. Sorry if you've never played Seven. That's a big spoiler. <laughs> but it was released yeah. in 1997, so I'm 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 a little exempt from it. So in that regard, um, comparing it to what it was rather than what it is, I think is a little unfair on the game. I know Alpha Wolf. Uh, I, I did watch his uh, game stream of it. I wasn't there for it because I missed the notification or I was doing something that I wasn't here. Uh, but I did go back and watch it. Now, don't get me wrong. The, the performance mode is very play, beautiful still to look at. I played performance. Yes. Because there was no way um, I could play the <laughs> FPS. But um, I will say in the performance mode, when you do play on it, you notice it with cutscenes more and the actual combat, not running around the world, unless you're literally panning the camera, like, constantly. <laughs> you're exempt from that entirely. <laughs> you're arguably the best game in history and did it perfectly for new and old fans. Uh, Donald I, I don't agree. Well, it is, you know, their best game, but I don't believe what they're doing with it, making the remake and remaster of it, is doing it justice. What's this for? 
Uh, Jay was talking about. Uh, I mean, seven FF7. is the most popular Final Fantasy of all of them. Um, well, that's debatable by some of them. They put it on the map. Absolutely. Uh, Donald Cowie, I'm having a look for this game you mentioned that's supposed to be saved on... Oh, there it is. We love the release of 2019, just as the main game optimized for series. It looks like it's time for us to head back in, though, as Froggen announced the Sinking City 2 and a Kickstarter campaign. I might actually uh, sign up to that Kickstarter campaign because this actually looked interesting to me. I didn't know this was on Kickstarter, so Donald, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I have supported a few Kickstarters in my time, and only one <laughs> Kickstarter that I've supported has failed. Well, it, the developers are still ongoing, but I don't have any faith that their game's coming out anymore. Um, but I mean, when we look at Final Fantasy, one I really enjoyed, I thought was good. I also love the you know the whole history behind Final Fantasy One. For those of you that don't know. Um, it wasn't supposed to be called Final Fantasy Free, if you don't know. It was actually yep. supposed to be called something entirely different, but Squaresoft went bankrupt. And the liquidators moved in to seize all the assets from Squaresoft. And what happened was the developers begged the liquidators that they wanted to give back one final farewell to their fans and finish the game that they were doing. And so they renamed it to Final Fantasy, their Final Fantasy game, basically, um, before they shut the shop. And they said to the liquidators, all the proceeds that come from this game, you can take and put it into whatever's owed. They just wanted to give something back. That sort of passion just doesn't exist in this world anymore, to be fair. Um, hmm. And the liquidators you know, went back and spoke to their people and came back and said, yeah, okay, we'll allow you to do that. Because they, they offered to work free to finish it. And so they did. And the game sold out in less than two days. And then they reprinted like a hundred more. And they sold out the same day as it went on sale. Then they tried to reprint another hundred and couldn't do it. Then they immediate and those sales from the games actually t paid off all the debts and then left some profits for them to get paid. Uh, then they went to make Final Fantasy 2 immediately and they uh, quickly built Final Fantasy 2, written the story and uh, made some changes. Uh, Final Fantasy II arguably is the worst Final Fantasy of them all. Um, and they, you know, they could only print two hundred copies of Final Fantasy II at the time. That's all the that's all the money that they had, and that sold like instantly as soon as it went out. It was crazy. <laughs> so uh, it's crazy to see that how their passion to work for free to give back to their fans at the time is what kick-started the whole branding of Final Fantasy to this very day. Oh, Final Fantasy is awful. That's the only game where you can increase your defense by beating yourself up. That is the only game you can miss a protect. That is the only game you can miss a goddamn cure. That game was awful. <laughs> that game was awful. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, so I finished one, two, three, four. I haven't finished four after years. I want to do that. Uh, five I've started but never finished. Six shamelessly I've never played. Seven I played. Uh, I didn't play Dirge of Cerberus. Um, eight I've played. Eight I really like. Uh, nine I played about halfway through and got bored. Uh, though I do want to go back, and I did try to go back to nine, but uh, my save wouldn't transfer to my next console from the ps1 to the ps2 and then it got corrupted yeah. during the transfer and i said screw you uh 10 is arguably my favorite 10 and 10 2 i finished still waiting for a 10 free uh 13 1 and 2 i finished 13 3 i still need to play uh 11 i finished because the storyline of Final Fantasy 11 three. does finish huh there was no 10 3 uh they've got the story written for it it was thirteen three. No, no, for ten three, they've got the story written. If you play really? through, yeah, if you play through um ten two on the remaster, at the yeah. end, um, it pretty much sets up I... Sins of Return. Uh, I've beaten it. 
Uh, maybe. You probably wasn't listening so to it. So apparently Spider-Man... Uh, probably wasn't. Uh, Spider-Man 2 is supposedly tomorrow getting their updated patch finally. Uh, new game plus a fly suit for Peter, a fresh suit for Miles, 10 photo modes, and 2 photo frames. There's going to be 10 photo mode stickers and 2 photo mode frames. Something that they uh, didn't have at launch. Uh, Diablo, I agree. Seven. When I played 7, I played 7 on the back of Halo. Yeah, 7 wasn't good for me at that time. I mean, all I wanted to do was be Master Chief and go and just destroy the Covenant. And playing 7... And I missed Yuffie and Vincent as well because I couldn't find them on disc 2. So disc 2 was arguably the worst disc I've ever played in my natural life's existence. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was bad if you couldn't find Yuffie and Vincent because that, di that disc was terrible. Um, but I had Halo at the time and that's when I played 7. And Halo just was, you know, well, to be fair, over. To be fair, Yuffie isn't missable. Vincent is. Uh, I could have, I never found Yuffie. I was running around in the open plains and not once did Yuffie attack me. She she comes across here and asks a question, right? Uh in disc one, yeah. Two. On no, disc one. Nope, it's disc two. You can get her as early as disc one. Okay, but in disc two is when you're really supposed to find her, because that's when you go searching for her. Because in disc two is when you go to Utah. You can go but to if uh, you, Utah. But if you go to Wu Tai uh and get there then you will be able to recruit her in right. Wutai. But in this too is when you actually it, go down it, there it, in it, that sir. direction. Um, and I never yeah. found out, she never come to me once. So I didn't even know she existed at the time. Bear in mind when I played it was what? When was the Xbox One OG Xbox release? 2007, 8, 9? The OG Xbox? 2004. Was it 2004? So yeah, the internet was still like a new thing to everyone, man. It was like 56k dial up and shit. So because <laughs> I was overseas in Kuwait when I got my uh, modified Xbox. 2001. OG. There you go. Like I remember, the internet was still like some 56k dial up, one meg download shit. So you know, looking up stuff was not really. We all, back then it was all about <laughs> magazines and getting those demo discs to try shit out, and it was so cool. Yeah, Jay, she's in the grass outside of Junon in Disc 1. I think if you don't get her and go to Costa del Sol, you have to wait until towards the end of Disc 2 when you meet up with her in Wutai. And Vincent, you can't get until way towards the end of Disc 2. <laughs> I know it Sometime means, Zana. Bob, you said you sent me something on Twitter. Um, I didn't get anything. So if you did send it to me, I really don't know. No, I didn't hear about that, uh, Alpha Wolf. Uh, no, I didn't hear that. But that wouldn't surprise me. Wait, Spider-Man 2 is already available on PC? Wait a minute. They're to he's talking about the Insomniac leaked version. My dude. Probably. My dude, what are you doing? Brazilian PC port. <laughs> My dude is trolling like hardcore. <laughs> oh, man. Still remember GameStop bundling the books with pre-release... Dude, I, I've actually got some of those books in their hardback cases and stuff. They're like collector's items for me now. Uh, Woodpit, uh, the movie The Wizard. It actually showcases that very thing. You know, I've been meaning to watch this. I've heard really good things about this movie. Has anyone, this series, has anyone seen it? Show good series. Uh, don't know anything about it. I think it's on like episode two or three at the moment. It's only like six episodes. It's a, or is it four episodes? Something like that. But it's supposed to be really, really good. I just had fun watching uh, the fifth Halo yesterday. No spoilers. Haven't seen it yet. The that only thing I'll say is it's only setting up for episode six. 
last week's. Oh, that was rubbish. Season uh, season two, episode five is definitely setting up for episode six sometime this week. Yeah, yeah, but the, that that episode was like it was like up to episode four, it was like so good, and then it was like yeah, you want very hard drop off. You want and mate? then set up. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't care about Kessler. <laughs> I just don't. I, the kid, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't care about him. Uh, I don't know if it's K drama. I mean, it's Shogun, <laughs> so it should be Japanese. Woodpit, I actually have the old DVD of the wizard uh, from Disney with Cloak and Dagger on the same disc. Also, what I'm planning on doing, guys, uh, on my channel, I've got a Steam Deck, and uh, I, for games that I can get access to, I'm planning on starting to do port reviews on the Steam Deck for games that are ported over to PC or for games that are available that I can get codes for. I'm not sure how many of you have a Steam Deck or would be interested in something like that, but it's something I'm going to try and do on like a weekly basis for now. Just do one port review a week with like best settings and stuff like that. If you're interested in something like that, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And everyone died. Everyone jumped ship. Like, no, don't do that chaos. Not now. I have no opinion. I don't have a Steam Deck. <laughs> I mean, I would do it with, like, the Asus Rog or the Claw or, you know, the Iron Year, but I don't have those. I only have the thing. What have you got, Pooh? So I don't have the others. I still want to finish this a second time. Alan Wake 2 PC system requirements change, so now your GPU might be able to handle it. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I know a lot of people like want to get like the best settings, the best frame rates and stuff. Like, for example, uh, the new Prince of Persia game once you've got it running and you've installed uh, Ubisoft Connect onto your Steam Deck through uh, the desktop OS and using the Flatpak, well, once you've gone through that and got it all set up and everything, the game on Ultra runs at 60 FPS. It doesn't drop a single frame. It's really impressive. Hey, look. Alan Wake 2 is, was my game of the year last year. I think Alan Wake 2 had some good aspects about it. I just never tried it myself. Damn, Cloud Plays. You are doing it. Good. He's been, he's been uh, making a lot of Helldivers 2 content. That game is popping. I gotta figure out how to turn the background on. Maybe I should do some Hell Divers 2 content. What do you think, guys? If you can get anybody to play with. I'll do some great uh, <laughs> waiting in the lobby uh, for server capacity. Oh, wait. They don't have that. Lobby simulator. Anymore. And I'm working on a weird multi-color buddy. I have these. That I got from a little, it's a little difficult on Immortal. Mate, I'm struggling. When I jump on this, I'm usually solo, and I'm struggling on like anything below challenging. It's a. Uh... I mean, you could always load up more Final Fantasy Seven. I get demonetized the moment I put it on. You haven't figured that out yet. No, no, it's a, it's a Brazilian company. It's demonetizing everyone on YouTube. Uh, Square really? Enix is trying to figure out wh who and how they're managing to do it. They're working with YouTube. But, like, in the creators program that I'm in for Square Enix, everyone, like, there's a huge list of people. They're just still streaming it, but they're getting constantly demonetized for the whole video, for the whole stream. Really? 
the you know wow there'll be like certain segments of like a uh, music being played for like 45 seconds to a minute in a in, in a cutscene and that demonetizes a whole four hour stream really mm-hmm hmm uh, and so that's kind of putting me off at honestly a little bit at the moment gotcha gotcha but I was planning on playing it today, but the stream happened today. So maybe we'll do some tomorrow. Bro, take the... <laughs> hey, bro, Tato's fun. Final Fantasy fourteen, Dude, do you know how much content there is out there for Final Fantasy fourteen? It's exactly the same. <laughs> It's the same game. It's a 10-year-old game. It wouldn't get the traction. I mean, I could make a few videos. I did make a few videos at the time. I could make a few, depending on what people want to know. But oh my gosh. there just isn't anything what really is new it? until uh, Dawn Trail. What is that game? I mean, all I need to do is... Uh, I mean, it's 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 a really old game. <coughs> it's a really, I mean, it's ten years old. The five least played jobs. <laughs> you know, the big points for Final Fantasy fourteen is raid guides and I don't do raids anymore uh, primal guides you need a you know, dedicated team for that right no one cares about the dungeons because you run through them quicker than you can pay attention to what's going on in the background and uh, leveling is fairly simple but like everything's available everything because it's just it's just a the game's been the brand for too long. Although the one of my favorite fourteen guides is uh, basically this guy. He's quit now. He used to be one of my favorite. Mm. I'm not sure if anyone's ever seen him, Lariza. And now he used to, he, he he was great. For my performance. I'm so getting demonetized for this. Nailed it! <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy is a complete idiot, but he was. Martin is actually just a guy with a bow. I want to ask a, a quick question. Sometimes. Has there Why been a multi platform game that has had a world as large as Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth? Say that again. Has there been a multi-platform game with an open world released that was multi-platform that's as big as Rebirth open world? I'm looking at it right now. Heaven's Ward? Final Fantasy XIV. It's huge. I mean, it has loaded screens, but it's still huge. But, you know, you've got Elden Ring, you've got Skyrim, you've got a... Uh... Whatever game well, yeah, I guess both of those loads. would work. I mean, even Horizon Forbidden West is massive. Because, you know, I'm just looking over that tweet from uh, Yoshinori Katase about Final Fantasy VII yeah. exclusivity. Yeah. That's just what he's Had it to not say. been on a single platform, the world map would not be seamless. No, no, that's bollocks, because PC would have run it much better. It's that simple. Absolutely. PC would have run about that. You know, uh, at the time when Yoshi P said, uh, fun, this game can only be done on PlayStation uh, 5. Do you remember? Yeah. And uh, he got a lot of flack for it. And he came out later and apologized and said it was just a joke. It was just something that 
he you know at the spur of the moment he wanted to say because uh it felt appropriate for the setting that he was in surrounded by a bunch of playstation people that were looking forward to the game you know it's that it, it really is that simple um at the end of the day <sighs> remake can run perfectly fine and it will run better on pc rebirth will, well actually remake i heard ran terribly on pc but rebirth if they do a good yeah. port will run better i appreciate that line i'm not going anywhere not for the time being but i am looking to uh diverse a little to try and bring in more content more diverse content rather than just news updates just different style of content to try and bolster the channel a little bit because it is getting a little stale with ventura the when they said that i was pissed what did they say Look, uh, we the, all know the, that the PS5 SSD is magical. It is so fast. Uh, when when they has, said that and equated it to graphics, I was downright pissed. <laughs> yeah, but it allows the data transfer, the pixels to move faster. Mm. That's what it is. Anyway, let's check let's check out this video. This is Bard, folks, for those of you interested. This is one of the Star Club. Hester now! Hey, we're back to instant actions, and oh my god, I'm playing songs all the time. So we've got three songs, right? There's Mage's Ballad, which actually used to give MP to people, but now it resets your blood letter, Prox. And there's Army's Payon, which used to restore TP, but now it makes you go faster? And there's this new one, Monder, Mon Minuet, one Minuet. It makes you pitch perfect, which damages people. And then we have Foes which uses MP, but according to Duty Find the Bards, you might be led to believe why would Bard have MP? Two Bards? What? Now I have to compete for being the party's favorite. They're already winning. They gave us the speed movement thing thing. Oh man, and they're playing foes bo- I can't win this. <gasps> oh, you yeah, did uh oh, the heal is definitely giving I did. me the command. I did. It's no surprise, I didn't really. Get the command. It, it, I, if I, I was also Sony, had this I cool ability where thing. I could play Song of Storms, you know, from Zelda, and I can make it rain. So here, I, I have the whole notes lined up right here in case I forget. I still say I that Square Enix bar, so I'm gonna play is going to be you. the next buyout from Microsoft. Oh, just kidding. That's copyright, so I had to block that part out. The but it worked. It's raining now. <laughs> This is how you do the rotation. First, go like this. Spin around. Stop. Double take. Three times. This guy's a One, complete idiot, but two. he makes good videos. But it's a shame he quit. <laughs> he quit, though. He couldn't take the YouTube algorithm anymore. Any content you guys want? Uh, 40 quid for, a, for the Stalker trilogy. Jeez. Really? That's a bit pricey. Ouch. I mean, Jonathan, the Ratchet and Clank one still applies. The best place to play that is still on PlayStation. On PC, it still stutters during the load. You don't get that on PlayStation. Uh, there's no reason, Diablo, why Sony would buy Square Enix. None at all. Their relationship with Square Enix is so powerful and so solid that them buying Square Enix just makes financially no sense. You know, Microsoft will never, ever get first dibs. And the one chance that they did have for first dibs, they turned it down with Final Fantasy sixteen, Right? They Agreed. actually had first dibs with Final Fantasy 16. That would have been a really good showing to get people to buy an Xbox Series X console because that game would have been exclusive only to Xbox. It would have been on PC. It wouldn't have been anywhere else. So if you wanted to play that game, hey, Japan, you want to play Final Fantasy 16? You got to buy our console. 
That would yep. have sold consoles. I don't care what anyone says. How you feel about Final Fantasy, that game would have shifted consoles. And it could have helped realign the way Xbox is right now. But they said, but, nah, you're good, man. You're good. We don't want it. JB, Square Enix uh, was almost out of business and Sony bought market shares in their company. And that's why Square Enix has a soft spot for all PlayStation. But at the same time, now the tables have turned and it's Square Enix that's buying shares in Sony. We don't know by how much, but we know it's happening. Yeah, but that, that's irrelevant. They're not buying enough of a controlling share to be able to dictate decisions. So that's, Probably not. You know, right? That's, that's nothing. I mean, they've got like 5% shares in, uh, is it Rockstar or something like that? Or Riot? So it's 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 not Probably. enough to have like a controller shit. So that's it. That's that's nothing. But the reality is, Microsoft has had multiple opportunities in the past to make really good goddamn decisions. Oh no yeah, absolutely. How you feel about Genshin Impact, right? No matter how you feel about Genshin Impact, whether you like it or not, I'm a waifu hunter, so I'm definitely gonna love that game. But irrelevant, <laughs> right? You know, I have no shame, literally. But what I will say is. Microsoft was offered that game first and they said they do not want to invest in a piece of crap that's going to make no money. Yeah, they feel like real dumbasses now when that game is making $90 million a month. Sony, on the other hand, went, yes, please, thank you very much. And guess what? Because they uh, got Genshin Impact, by proxy they got Honkai Star Rail. That's making $85 million a month. So, you know, these games are making like 180 million a month, obviously not all on PlayStation, but a good chunk, you know, a good percentage is on PlayStation, even if it was 30%, that's still, you know, 70, 30% of that 70% is going to Sony as money, and Microsoft turned this down, like they're proper dumb. Yep, they are. You know, you, you gotta call dumb when you see dumb. Like, when people say they're not a trillion-dollar company for nothing, they clearly have a business sense. Yeah, you got to wonder with that business sense, folks. you got to wonder. When they're throwing billions of dollars away, you got to wonder where that business sense has gone. Because clearly, uh, there is a, there, there, there's a problem there. Uh, what was it? Uh, they turned down ex an exclusivity deal for Grand Theft Auto 3. They, you know, yeah. Rockstar approached them for to make Grand Theft Auto. I don't know if it was full time, but at least it was a timed exclusive deal for Grand Theft Auto Three, and they turned it down. It's like you got you, there's there's certain decisions that come your way where you look at it and you go, "Huh, this looks like easy money. This looks like a really really good opportunity. I think I'm gonna pass on that deal." You want a hot topic real quick? What's that? Kotaku is defending Sweet Baby Inc. Well, of course. Kotaku is uh, pretty much their sister channel. Sweet Baby Inc. doesn't do what some gamers thinks it does. Uh, Jay, uh, they already have. But it's going to take time before she... They hired the PlayStation... Uh, person that handled the Sony's Japanese affairs um, so they hired right, her, right. but that's going to take time before it establishes itself and builds something An earlier patch fixed rifts on PC chaos they are now faster than PS5 as long as you have a gen 4 drive that took a while though right I mean at gen 3 when it was released it wasn't available it wasn't better I mean, I know you've got Gen 5 now, but like when I built my PC, my the, the best I could get was a Gen 3. So at the time of when the game came out, it was better on thing. We're talking now, what, a year, two years down the line? So maybe now it's my statement is factually wrong. But at the time of release, the PlayStation platform was the best place to play it. But yeah, if Gen 4 is faster now, then yeah, that should fix it. And then PlayStation PC does become the best place to play. Imagine if Xbox had Final Fantasy 16, Genshin Impact, Honkai. 
I bet that's four million consoles. Probably more, dude. Probably more. Xbox has Roblox had Roblox exclusivity for a long time, and Roblox did well. Roblox is one of the most played games on Xbox. I don't know why. Although I've seen some pretty sick <laughs> games on there, like they've actually that what they can do now with Roblox is crazy. I've seen like games that look like Battlefield and Call of uh, Call of Duty on there, and they play good, man. I was trying out, and they look good. Bold Alpha with it at two US dollars. Xbox can win the East single handed with StarCraft 3. Yeah, that's yeah, probably, probably why they're not going to do it. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> you guys are going to start calling me Peter instead of Chaos now. <laughs> uh, why have so many missed a detail in the Sweet Baby logo? Under the swell is a line making the swell a lollipop. What's the lollipop supposed to mean? What? Say that again? The Sweet Baby Ink logo and underneath the swell makes a lollipop. Yep. They better. <laughs> it's in reference to the fact that they call themselves babies. Oh, fair enough. Like, if you look at half of their bios on their Twitter accounts, somewhere it'll say, like, you know, great big baby of Sweet Baby Inc. Incorporated. All right. Let me put a question to you all about Sweet Baby. And this isn't me defending them. You've seen my video. You've seen my reaction. You know how I feel. Okay? Mm -hmm. But here is my question. Is it? Is your anger being directed at the right place? Should you be angry at Sweet Baby Inc. for putting these ideas forward? Or should you be angry at the companies and publishers and platforms that are agreeing to put these forward? Both. Where does the ultimate problem lie? I believe it's both. No, you're wrong. Where does the root problem lie? Who who holds the responsibility? Well, obviously, it's the final product of the companies that are outsourcing to Sweet Baby Inc. Exactly. Exactly. It's like a Cyberpunk CDPR Red, right? They wouldn't, they wouldn't need Sweet Baby Inc. if they actually had writers who knew what the hell they were doing in the first place. It's the publishers. Uh, another example, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. When that goes to Sony and Microsoft, they have to pay seven to ten thousand dollars to get it through certification. During that certification, they need to make sure that the game works, doesn't crash, doesn't have you know game breaking bugs. Sony and Microsoft have to pass that, pass their quality control checks before that game can get gold sign off. So those PS4 and Xbox One versions that you guys all saw that was horrendous, broken, uh, unplayable, just know that Microsoft and Sony both said that this was perfectly acceptable to be sold to a consumer. CDPR should never have pushed that game for, uh, you know, to pass... Uh, I forgot what it's called now. but To put the cyberpunk on the shelves. Yeah. The, what was the word I just used? I can't remember. But they should never have pushed that through. So that's, that's on cyberpunk. They tried a fast one. But Sony and Microsoft turned around and said, this game in this standard, in this state, is acceptable for you to buy. So who's to blame? CDPR for trying a fast one? Or Sony and Microsoft for saying that that version of the game on Xbox and PS4 is acceptable for you to buy. Well, while people answer that, I would like to say the reason why I say both about the whole Sweet Baby Ink question is because of the fact that they are trying to bring uh, Gamergate 2.0.
Yeah, but none of this would be a problem if these publishers and men, you know platforms just said fuck off. We don't. Want they want you. the ESG ratings. Find it some other way. You don't I, I, need to I, I go agree. there. They should. So it, the, the ultimate fault and blame lies with the platforms. You know when uh, I'm not defending uh, Sweet Baby Inc., but when they turn around and say, "Hey, we're not at fault here. They're the ones coming to us." And we're giving them the Oh, I agree. I agree. You know, that's not on Sweet Baby Inc. Now, Sweet Baby Inc. have some twisted and fucked up sense mindsets, especially <laughs> some of the people yeah. there that, you know, some of the shit we found out. I agree with that. Right. But the bottom line is the buck stops. Gaming the company publishers shouldn't have to go to them in the first place, yeah. But not even like I'll use a really recent uh point, right? Um, Redfall. Where does the buck stop with Redfall? Does it stop with Zenimax or with Phil Spencer? Where does the buck stop? That's a hard one. The buck <laughs> stops with Phil Spencer. 100%. Every single time. Every day of the year. Every minute of the year. Every second of the year. Because he he and his team... He approved it, yeah. Game. They approve it. They are the last bastion of defense. When I'm working in QA, if I pass something, I am the last line of defense. So if I give it the green light and I pass the, the work that the developers are doing at work right now, and it's shit, I'm responsible for it because I passed it. I gave it the green light. Redfall was <laughs> a failure on Phil. This is what I'm saying. Like People are often targeting their annoyance, their anger, their rage at the first at target people. that they can get, at the wrong people. They are at fault. I'm not saying they don't hold any burden of fault. They do. But the ultimate problem, the ultimate fault lies at the top. And that is always the leadership. Always. I mean, just look at Redfall. The developers Whoever's in the to... last line of leadership for releasing, yeah. Uh, no worries, uh, Diablo, thank you for stopping by, my dude. Look at Diablo, uh, Redfall. They they started building that game. They had a clear vision of what they wanted. Zenimax yep. CEO came along and said, "Oh, that looks really cool. Make it a live service." And they're yep. like, "Yeah, but we can't do that. We only we didn't build it for that." Yeah, I don't care. Build it, uh, make it a live service. And then they were like, mm, "We can't really do that." And I said, "Look, I don't care what you want. I'm telling you, this needs to be a live make service. So you're gonna make yep. it happen. I don't care how you do it." So, you know, all these features that people are saying, like, where's the drop-in, drop-out kind of features? It's not baked into the core. So it will yep. never exist because it's not designed for that. The a live service was baked in after. Then on top of that, they turned around and told the CEO, hey, dude, look, this game isn't what we think wanted it to be now because of all these changes. It's become something that isn't Redfall. We can change the name and call it anything else, but it's not what we set out to do. No, nope, we're keeping it red for. And then the uh, CEO goes, well, no, you're going to keep this shit and you're going to finish it. And so the developers are now working on a game that they don't want to work on. They've got no passion to work on. They hate working on it. They can't go to Phil because they've been threatened with their jobs, as we found out, uh, with them being gagged with, by the CEO of Zenimax. And so yep. then the game comes out shit. Who's to blame, the developers or the leadership? The leadership. It's always the 100%. leadership. Look at Anthem. The leadership took seven years to figure out what the fucking game is. The developers had to find out watching an E3 presentation. They turned around and said, man, this game looks amazing. And when they saw the word Anthem appear on the screen, their hearts sank. Because that was the first time they found out what Anthem was. Yep. Because EA actually, Bioware had a separate team uh, restricted under NDA with like five or six developers working secretly in a locked room to make that demo. Who's to blame here? The developers for the way Anthem turned out in 15 months or leadership? It's always the leadership. It just always gets passed on to other people because the leadership never wants to take the brunt of it. Okay, that's my rent. <laughs> Why am I being blamed, Arthur? God damn it. 
because uh, you're like the easiest one to blame. I mean, you're the one who looks like Gollum. I do not look like Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you look more like Kong. Hey, Lion, I hope your interview goes well, dude. Uh, Jonathan, the 60 FPS patch has been out for ages. Where have you been, dude? <laughs> it's been out for a long time. Now, Redfall now no, is actually in a really good state. I like it. Yeah, yeah. It, it did have a lot of improvement since its launch. I still have yet to try it. And So apparently that Silk Knight person who predicted uh, Ghost of Tsushima coming to PC down to the day... Mm-hmm. Is the same person predicting Starfield November December mm-hmm. for the PS5, and Colt Eastwood of all people is saying, "Well, this isn't going to go over well." Showing a picture of Phil Spencer saying they are not Starfield or Indiana Jones. <laughs> well, this is the thing, right? We know that there is no way, no way, that they can port, uh, start development now and get starfield ported in six months over to playstation playstation doesn't even no, use direct right so if it actually does release this year then you know 100 percent that phil spencer lied during that presentation without yep. a shadow of doubt he will have lied to the whole community and that will kill xbox for the majority of and kill any credibility of phil spencer too but that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. But all they're doing right now is trying to spread that fear mongering, that bullshit dilemma, the bullshit rumors, because that's all they can do. Because they look, the bottom line is, I think, uh, was it KG Gamer that said it? I think it might have been, where he said if Starfield releases on PlayStation, it will get a 97 out of 100. That clearly tells you how much they want it and how much they like it. Yep. The chat isn't in the stream. Hmm? Your chat screen, the chat's not showing up. Yeah, I know. Um, (laughs) I have to go like this. I didn't do that. So if we go back here. But yeah, I know that wasn't there. <laughs> I wasn't planning on coming to the screen. Right. Um, now, I, I agree, Arthur. He did say, never say never. In the interview that he followed up with uh, Tom Warren after, which was a bullshit loaded question, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, Cord, pretty much. Oh, and by the way, Jay, I'm not sure if you're still... In- oh, you are still in the chat. Um, I played Final Fantasy 16. I'm still playing it through. Um, I'm on the second to last crystal, I believe, if that makes any sense. I've just killed the white dragon. I, I beat it, and I was not impressed after I beat it to either do New Game Plus or felt compelled to go get the DLC. Uh, Pentiment was in development for quite some time. Yes. All of these. Uh, so okay. So let me let me let me make this clear. So Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves, Pentiment, and Grounded, all four of those started development during the FTC trial, when Phil Spencer turned around to the FTC and Judge Corley and said games will come to PlayStation and the Nintendo Switch. Uh, on a case by case basis and we will assess those games on a case by case basis my guess is that their lawyers at that point said Phil if we are going to do this you need to pick four games now and start working on it so development Mm. on those games started you know in 2022 before they were ported over before they got released so those games well Pentiment probably a bit later but we do know for a fact that uh, Sea of Thieves started in 2022. And this was slap bang in the middle of the FTC case. So this was after he, under oath, he made the promise to deliver some of those games to other platforms. So he has to, by 
decree put some games on other platforms because under oath he made that promise a lot of people forget this but he did he will be in contempt of court if he doesn't do it he has to by law do it there is yep. no two ways about it he fucked himself by doing that there's just no two ways about it but he had to do that in order to get the abk deal across because the ftc wouldn't accept anything less that's a good question ben why didn't he just announced the ports back when the FTC uh, appeal was going on. Definitely I think for the same good. reason, I, I think it's for the same reason why he didn't even announce them at that uh, Xbox uh, podcast event. Uh, it's kind of a, a cop out, but he did say that he wanted the studios themselves to announce which games they were and when they were coming. I'm not saying he lied about the games. He lied about letting us know in an event, unless that event was between the podcast and the Pentiment Drop. Well, he said in the podcast that those, you know, the platforms themselves were going to announce the games themselves. So, you know, in the end, it was a case of a. He didn't really have a choice. And it's not like it's going to stop with these four. Um, but what this actually allows Microsoft to do now is that if they go to buy Capcom or Sega or FromSoft or any other company where they want to go and buy a, you know, a 51% of the shares to get a controlling uh, majority, right? Yep. If they want to go and do that, the FTC is going to come up and go, hey, stop right there. I'm suing you. And then they're going to go to court because the FTC is going to sue. And so the judge is going to go, why are you suing? He's going to foreclose games. And they're going to go, but we kept our promise. We put these yep. four and these two, whatever they are, also on <clears throat> PlayStation and Switch. Where did we foreclose games? You know, we own the <clears throat> companies. We're not going to release everything on them. We never said we would. But we did say that, you know, games that make sense, we're going to put on other platforms. And then the FTC is going to go, oh. And at that point, the judge is going to go, what's your next argument? Uh, you're welcome. Uh, they're a trillion dollar company! And then they're going to go, right, but what's your point? Mm -hmm. But yep. they make a lot of money. And by the way, this was actually a, without a joke, this was a literal argument that the FTC put forward. This is actually a real mm -hmm. argument that they put forward. They said, mm -hmm. in court, as a defense, that <laughs> Microsoft is a trillion dollar company. Oh, sorry, at the moment, a two, what, two, two trillion dollar company at the time. And that's why this should be blocked. I'm not even bullshitting you. That was their defense at the time. Yep. That Microsoft is, and the, the court, the, Judge Corley looked at them and said, was it Judge Corley or was it uh, Judge? Um, I don't remember. I think it, no, no, it was Judge. It was Judge Corley. Um, she looked at him and said, "Are you crazy? That's not a defense. It was. It was stupid." Uh, Lion. The reason why the FTC has a hard on for Microsoft is because of Joe Biden. Joe Biden does not like Microsoft. He never has yeah. liked Microsoft. And he appointed Lena Khan to basically do a job. And she's just doing a job. Everyone hates Lena Khan, but the puppet master is Joe Biden. The moment he comes out of office and someone else comes in and the FTC changes, you'll see this whole FTC thing go away. It will just disappear overnight. Unless they hate Microsoft too. But I don't think uh, the opposing party do. Oh, uh, I posed a question to you about your Final Fantasy VII uh, playing uh, that I figured out an answer to uh, regarding to Chadley and going back to previous areas. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to go back to actually go to Chadley and buy the stuff from the previous areas because it only shows the latest one. But for every region that you go to, you can scroll through the different um, regions. Right. I mean, JB, you're right. They can't drag this on forever, but at the moment, they are still in court. 
So now, because right now the FTC is still in court arguing that the decision by Judge Corley was unlawful and shouldn't be counted and that a preliminary injunction should still be granted to them. They're also in court right now arguing because of the decision of Judge Corley being uh, not lawful, the FTC should be granted minority report powers. Anyone here seen the minority report? Anyone yep. at all? Do you understand I the have. concept of the minority report? Yes. So for those of you that don't understand don't know the minority report, it basically allowed the I guess the police force, the legal force in the film. It mm-hmm. kind of gave them like a they could see future uh situations. Events. Events, that's what I'm looking the word I'm looking for. They'll see the event <laughs> and they'll see the different timelines it could take from nothing happening to someone getting murdered. Right? It, it played out all of them. And so to mm-hmm. prevent the worst case scenario, before that event took place, yeah, the, the that- police could basically warp in, grab the guy before he did anything, committed any crime, and take him away. The FTC yeah. right now is asking for that power in... Yep. Uh, the US legal system they want to be able to they want to be in a position where if there is even a 0.1% chance that for example in this case Microsoft could hold back a game exclusive they would have the opportunity they would have the the right to block it that is what they want they don't, they, they, they want to be in a position where they don't have to legally prove it just have the possibility of it happening and that's the second thing that they're fighting for right now. Now, the first point that they're fighting for, which is foreclosing and the case being wrong, the fact that four games have gone over to PlayStation means that that argument is dead. It's finished. It's over. It's completely yep. done. Because they can no longer argue that those games... Now, if they turn around and say, yeah, but they haven't put Starfield or Redfall or any other big game on there... It doesn't matter. They've put Call of Duty. Overwatch is still on there. Diablo is still on there. Uh, they've put a bunch of other games on there. So that's that case done and dusted. That argument is gone. So once the preliminary injunction thing is thrown out, the FTC is finished. But that is all they've got because they are fighting right now to divest Activision completely away from Microsoft. They are still wasting taxpayers' dollars in doing that. Wood pit, that's it. Precogs. I mean, Jay, the FTC turned round in court at the time when I was watching and said, yeah, but what does this mean to PlayStation? What does it mean to my PlayStation? And Judge Corley <laughs> for two and a half hours was listening. And then she turned around and asked, turned around to the FTC dude and said, I, I need to ask you a question. For the past two and a half, three hours, you have mentioned, and I've made a note here, the word PlayStation as a defense 67 times. I remember it's like yesterday. And she said, you've mentioned a consumer zero times. Why are you protecting Sony and not the consumer? Yep. That's what they turned. That's what she turned around and said to the FTC. And the FTC said, "Oh well, by me saying PlayStation, I'm clearly talking about the consumer." She said, "No, you're not. You're talking about Sony." Talking about the corporation. Yeah, yeah. The judge, Judge Corley, cooked them good. But this is this is mm-hmm. the sort of bullshit that Microsoft had to go through. And honestly, yep. I'll, I'll say this much. The ABK deal might have been a good deal overall for Microsoft because of the mobile side of gaming. But Mm -hmm. as a console, it has her Xbox, you know. For two years, they didn't release any showcases, any real major releases because they tried to show themselves weak to try and push this deal through. They're still showing themselves weaker than they need to be because the case is still ongoing. If they actually, for whatever reason, came out and started offering checks for final fantasy 17 silent hill free remake or whatever like really big 
power moves. That's going to stick out like a sore thumb during this case. And it will give the FTC even more ammunition that Microsoft just doesn't need. This whole situation with ABK has just been a bad, bad play. And if you're asking me, as a consumer, it wasn't worth it. As a business move, totally worth it for Microsoft. Mm -hmm. But me as a consumer, what benefit as of right now have I seen that is worth the last three years of Microsoft taking beating after beating after beating? The sacrifice wasn't worth it. The amount of hoops that they have to jump through, that they have been jumping through, and that they're going to continue to have to jump through because of it. They didn't expect it to last this long. Um, But it just wasn't worth it. And Microsoft as a whole and the fan base has suffered for it. But Phil Spencer can't come out today and say, I'm doing this because of the FTC. Because the moment he says that, that's public. The FTC is going to say, ah, so this is all a ruse. This is all a game. See, Judge? He's doing it on purpose to fuck us over later, to fuck players over later. He can't do that. He literally can't yep. come out and say why he's doing this. He can't come out. He would shoot himself and in the foot. Obviously, this is just my take and my thought process on this, but this is what makes logical sense to me. There's no other reason why he would do what he's doing. There's just none. You've got to be like, there has to be like a mental switch in there that would have turned off entirely to make him go full mental, you know, deranged for him to do some of the stuff that he's coming out with his arm is twisted he has no choice he has to play the game until the ftc fuck off and once they piss off then i'm assuming is when you're gonna see microsoft really take the gloves off but until then they have to act like little pussies just to appease the ftc and the courts because microsoft is a you know their number one cap trillion dollar company right now all eyes are on them. They are constantly in the spotlight. They don't look at it as Xbox. They look at it as Microsoft. Now, if Xbox divested as a company from Microsoft and became its own entity, no one would give a shit. Because it's such a small company. But because it's part of the conglomerate of Microsoft, it's under spotlight. And Phil cannot do anything. But for the past three years, sales have suffered. Growth has suffered. Everything has suffered in a bit to just get things across the line and over and done with and sorted. But everything has suffered. So when you start seeing some of these decisions coming out, some of them are forced, like the game's going to multiple platform, because they made a promise under oath. That this would happen. Just like Phil Spencer made a promise under oath. That Call of Duty will always be on PlayStation. He made that promise to the FTC. The FTC then turned around and said. Hey if you do. Can we have the games for free as well? Lit quote for quote. That was his words. Can we have the games for free? And Judge Corley asked him to clarify. Who is we? And then they turned around and said PlayStation. And Judge Corley then turned around and told the FTC to piss off. They own the franchise. They're going to get paid for it. End of story. And she moved on quickly. But the FTC tried to get Call of Duty for free on PlayStation. Yep. Right? This is how much of a pony they are. Or how much they hate Microsoft. Or at least that one particular person who posed the question. Right? So, um... <laughs> Your chapters. <laughs> but in the end, um... You know... Call of Duty will forever be on PlayStation. Sony also got a better deal. When they were with Activision, it was a 20-80 split. Sony only made 20%. Now they make 30%. They actually have a better deal for 10 years than they've ever had with Call of Duty. But after 10 years, that's when the deal changes. Microsoft can turn around to Sony and say, right, now you, you want a new deal? 15%. And there's nothing the FTC or the courts or anyone can do about it. After 10 years, they can turn around and say, right, our parity clause with you is officially over. You're still going to get the game, but we're going to get exclusive operators. We're going to get timed exclusive maps. We're going to get exclusive game modes for a year. We're going to get exclusive content in terms of, you know, 
cosmetics and charms and shit like that. And there's nothing Store in it. That. But that's in 10 years' time. Now, Jordan, what do you mean Xbox can't afford Activision? They're part of the ABK deal, and Act- uh, Microsoft has already bought them. No, he's right. No, he's right. Xbox, as a soul, if Xbox was divested, they could never afford Activision. Xbox as a company, not Microsoft, Xbox as a company oh, okay, could okay. never afford Activision. They don't have that money. Gotcha. So he's I right. misunderstood. But um, all this talk about Microsoft also, oh, well, they have to recoup that $70 million. It was already shown in the FTC when the FTC apparently accidentally let slip how much Microsoft were going to make from this acquisition. And then Judge Corley got pissed off at them when Phil Spencer had a go at the FTC when he got pissed off. When they're making, as soon as the deal closed, they made a, over a hundred billion. As soon as the deal signed off, they stood to make over a hundred billion in assets. Yeah. So though they pay, they, and they didn't actually pay seventy billion because the company was rich in money as well, but they basically yeah. acquired over a hundred billion in assets. So they made like 30, 40 billion profit from this deal in asset value. Yeah. Yeah. So they've already recouped that money. So all this talk about, oh, they've got to recoup that 70 billion somehow. These fake economists out there that, that seem to come out of the woodwork and the caves and the under dwellers of their mum's basement, you know, like nibs. Mm-hmm. You know, they seem to come out of the woodwork somehow. Uh, all with these like uh, essay long posts about economics that no one wants to read. No. But in the end, they've made their money and then some. You know? <laughs> so it's not that Microsoft doesn't have the money. Right now, they are held by the bulls and they can't really do anything. I want to see what they're going to like. I'm almost at a point. Well, I reckon this generation is just a write-off, like entirely. And I think Microsoft themselves are pretty much at that point where this generation for Xbox, they're just writing it off. They'll get what they can get. And they're hoping by the next generation, all of these court ordeals, all of these court dramas will just be finished, done, and moved on. And then they can show the world exactly what it is. Get those third-party deals. Get those exclusivity deals that are only on the console that will shift console platforms. That's when we're really going to see the true Xbox. I hate to say the whole wait until the next generation because I'm sick of that term myself, but this is what I'm seeing. Where's my drink? Oh, it's too far. <laughs> Is anyone outside the door? Can you get me a cold drink, please? Please. Thank you. But that's the way I'm seeing it. Could Joe Biden be held accountable for that then? No. Absolutely not. Because all he will say is, I've appointed the FTC and they're autonomous. They can do what they want. But if you think for a split second that the president isn't pulling the strings or in the UK, Rishi Sunak isn't pulling the strings, you're crazy. Nothing is independent ever. There's always powers behind the doors pushing and prodding and telling them what to do. And if they don't like it, they'll be, you know, you'll see just, oh, I've come to the end of my tenure and I've decided to retire at this point of my career. (laughs) it's worth paying attention from time to time to the US Securities and Exchange Commission I mean it's all there I'm making it Uh, Reborn yeah it is the peace support's coming fast I'm kind of looking forward to the Outlast Trials. It looks interesting. I'm 
Bob, I absolutely would, because it would just mean more games for me on Game Pass. Yeah? Huh? What about the cat? So let him come in. Where's Oreo? Is it Effa? Well, as long as he doesn't come and turn my PC off, it's okay. <laughs> what are you doing? Should I turn the camera around? God damn, you run out fast. Bold Alpha Wolf with that $5 super chat. How long do FTC planning to battle Microsoft in the courts? Like, could it be as long as Disney when they fought Marvel Comics? It's unknown, man. At the end of the day, the FTC doesn't really have any ground to stand on, but it's still ongoing. And it's, uh, it's just stupid. Uh, tell that to uh, PC players. Bob, they love their monopolies over there with Steam. So... Mm -hmm. Steam has a complete monopoly, right? No one buys games if it's not on Steam. It's a self-imposed monopoly. Well, there's GOG and Epic. They're all, they're, all, they're all gone. No one wants those. But yeah, Bold Alpha, it's really unknown. Because there's, you know, right now the FTC is just pushing this just to be an annoyance. Because they can't win. I'm hoping that some point this year it will finally be over and they can move on. But no, uh, Bob, I also agree that monopolies are not good. Um, but we just don't know. But I'm hoping it ends soon because uh, the handicap that it's causing is severe. Very much so. I mean, don't you remember in Congress, was it Congress, where they brought up the FTC to explain what they were doing and why they were doing it? And Lena Khan said, it wasn't me. It was all them. I told them to stop doing it, but they're the ones that wanted to pursue it. I don't know anything. It's got nothing to do with me. She threw her whole team under the bus when she was questioned Pretty why much. she's still doing it. The whole thing is just a farce. It's a joke. Uh, no, the FCC isn't talking about Game Pass. I mean, if they did, that would be a big joke, right? Um, but that's too far out of their purview. That's actually consumer-friendly. Uh, no one uses GOG. No one uses Epic. No one uses Windows. No one uses Game Pass. Everyone uses Steam. It's a monopoly. But I agree with uh, Ben's statement about how... Um, he was saying um, it's fine when PlayStation buys exclusivity, but not fine when Xbox buys studios and that they forget that Sony buys studios too. Not to mention that while they, uh, Microsoft and Xbox bought ABK and laid off 1900 employees, yes, it's a sad day of how many people got lost uh, for their jobs. But at the same time, Sony did not buy anybody. They fired 900 people and they closed down studios, including the entire studio of London, which was their VR. Um, you're also forgetting that the whole byproduct of a merger is duplicate jobs being lost. Like mine right now. That is now. true. Literally, we've just had a merger. We found right. out yesterday as a surprise you know, the leadership came out and go, hey, we've merged. Surprise! That's not a joke, by the way. I'm literally serious. That's what they did. Like, hand to God. That's literally what they did. Um, so we actually found out after it was all done. Yes. Um, and now we're being told that, you know, our jobs are wow. duplicates and we're going to lose our jobs. It's part of a merger. That's that's the reality of it. Um, I did talk to Shit, surprise, though. <laughs> 
I rarely try to stay away from Steam. I don't like their practices. I don't like the way people prop them up and, you know, see them as the only platform that you can buy a game. Like even uh, for PlayStation Launcher, when I put that post up, a number of people said, that's fine, I'll wait a year if I have to until the game comes on Steam. Like people are willing to wait a whole year before they're prepared to play a game just so it can go on Steam. It's a self-imposed monopoly. Gabe doesn't have to do anything. No one mm -hmm. buys from anything else. Um, but yeah, it's, it, 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 it's, it's weird, but that's where we are right now. Hmm. Uh, I don't know, Arthur, but they just won't, I mean, they say that they want everything to be under one launcher, but I don't know. It's, it's almost like it costs some money to download another launcher. Yeah. Digit. I go to e Epic, I buy a game, I click the play button, and it works. What more do you want from a launcher? I'm genuinely serious. Like I, I hear a lot of people say that the launcher is shit. You can go, you can search for a game. It's got a store that you can use. They give free games away. And you can play the game you want. You can check out your library easily. You click play and it works. I I, I really don't understand that. Like what 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 is it that you want from the launcher? Yeah. I mean, developers have no choice but to put their games on Steam, right? Because if the game isn't on Steam, it's not going to sell. So right now you're... It's not just player choice. It's developer choice as well. It's publisher choice as well. Yeah. Alan Wake 2 yeah. just didn't sell enough because it was on Epic Game Store. Yeah. If it was on Steam, it would have quadrupled its sales. So no, Bob, you are 100% wrong with this one. You can continue going on as much as you want, but you are wrong. Steam has a controlling... Con they, they have an overwhelming control over the PC market. I mean, people won't even play the games on Game Pass and they'd rather pay money and get it on Steam. You can say no for all you want. I really don't care. Now, what Microsoft should have done is turned around to Steam and said, you get the games a year later. For anyone that wants to play our games, you play them on the Xbox Game Pass store or through Game Pass. And then a year later, they go to Steam. I'm really hoping when Sony releases their um, their PlayStation launcher, that is what they do. So Bold Alpha Wolfpack for the five uh, asked me if uh, Microsoft has any type of nail in the coffin angle to put in the FTC arguments in the dirt. Uh as Chaos already stated before, they don't, but the only thing that they can do is appease them by saying, okay, you're going to try to come at me with canceling games where we're literally upholding our end of the bargain by putting games onto the other platforms. So FTC can keep coming at them with all the arguments they want, but Microsoft can literally show examples to shut any argument down but it's not going to stop the FTC from trying to dredge up things. Bob, would you have bought Starfield if it wasn't available on Steam for a year? Or would you have waited for a year um, for it to come on Steam? Would you have bought it on Game Pass? That's the question. I want the honest truth. Would you have bought it on Game Pass... If you liked it, or would you have waited six months to a year for it to come to Steam? 
Well, see, Jordan, that's not true because look at Pentiment alone and High Five Rush. Everybody was calling both of those games trash because it was PC and Xbox. And now that it's coming to PlayStation, they're getting higher Metacritic scores. They're getting all the praise and saying, hey, it's finally on a real console. Just because it's no longer on Xbox or it's not an Xbox exclusive, it's on PlayStation. So that has nothing to do with the, whether people want the game or not. There are games for everybody, whether or not it's a game, it's a game for you or not. Somebody does want it. You, Bob, are in the minority with that. Everyone that, and I've spoken to a lot of people, they try on Game Pass, buy on Steam. See, I got the early access on Game Pass and physical copy, and I upgraded the uh, the wife on her Game Pass to the deluxe edition. Uh, what do you mean, Bold Alpha Wolf? DFTC makes them surrender everything. I mean, they technically have already, right? They've surrendered the cloud rights. They've su- surrendered all of the ABK games. So... And that's fine if you don't want them, Jordan. Not every game is for everyone. Uh, Reborn, Ubisoft has already clarified that, that any account that has a game already purchased, you don't have to log in. You will always have your game. It was only for accounts that don't have any purchases to them that will be deleted. And that is because of the GDPR rules, not because of uh, Ubisoft. <laughs> in, in real life, Batman. You're not going to hit it. And then once the video goes in. And that's something that's a very big concern, Alpha Wolf, is the fact that FTC has little to no oversight. If they don't like it, they can go after them. Well, Alpha Wolf, this is the thing, right? Uh, once the FTC loses this final hail mary that they've done because don't forget they actually (laughs) said that they weren't gonna pursue it and on the final day they decided that they were gonna pursue it and they reopened the case Um, but once they lose this it's game over it's game over um and even after when microsoft go to buy someone else be it capcom sega from soft whoever all the FTC is going to have to go on is that they're going to foreclose. And the fact that Microsoft has four games or six games or eight games on other platforms already outside of the pre-existing ones that they're porting now will immediately make the FTC look stupid and end that case there and then and it will be thrown out just like every other bullshit case. So Microsoft at that point won't have anything to worry about. Everything they're doing now with these porting over is by way of creating that future situation, that future defense, so they don't have to go through what they went through again, because this is painful. For Xbox customers that are only on Xbox and don't have access to PC or a PlayStation or anything else, you know, it's been a very difficult time these past two, three years. With releases, with games, everything. And you know, it sucks. It does, but just know that everything they're doing now is in theory, at least based on what I'm thinking, for a better tomorrow. You're welcome, dude. Man, I did not expect this to turn into an FTC trial stream. (laughs) But it's actually been interesting, I'll say that. I'll say that. It's been a definitely an interesting a discussion. Yeah. Microsoft really seems like they are going to buy Sega. If they buy Sega, they absolutely have to release the Dreambox in Japan. 
Dreamcast. Dreambox. Dreambox. Yeah, so it, it takes the dream from the Dreamcast and the box from the Xbox. <laughs> Jesus. And look, it has to happen, right? And it kind of has to have like the X for Xbox with a swirl in the middle. That'd be so <laughs> dope. That'd be so dope. And then we get like Power Stone, Panzer Dragoon, Auto, Daytona oh, USA, Sega no. Rally. What do you mean? No. 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 Go away. Those games are Just, sick. No. <laughs> Scud Race. Oh, man, you're going to make me take out my Dreamcast again. <laughs> These games are so good. Just that single analog stick controller, man. That, 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 that. Them days were hard. Going back to them days. Like I Here's a to... quick question for you about Sega. Go on. Those 11 games that Blue were announced Stinger! during the VBA. Yeah. It was... <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, Blue Slinger. I gotcha. Um, the 11 games that Sega announced... Do you think uh, they're going to drop in their own thing like Rare Replay or each of them as individual games? If you're a... Say that again? Do you think they're going to drop them all in something like Rare Replay or all as their own individual games? I would like it like a Rare Replay, but if they actually were to do something like that, then I would expect them to be remade as their own individual games. Man, look at those graphics. Look at it. <laughs> look at it. This is, this is crazy. Look at it. I'm looking. I'm looking. Hey, Bold Alpha with another five member gifted. Congrats, Jay, Jordan, JB. What? I'm not uh, going to even try to pronounce that Jim one. Jim Bambino <laughs> Di Geronimo. See, I got that one. Hashtag Witch Hunter, hashtag Cult Destroyer. <laughs> Captain Crunch. <laughs> hey, thank you very much for that additional five gifted subs, my dude. I appreciate you. But yeah, that that was a. I remember Blue Stinger, man. This was like the Resident Evil clone that with like lightsabers and shit. This was good. This was good. Was it? Was this on the Dreamcast or the Sega Saturn? It was on the Dreamcast. Exclusive survival horror game. Hey, then let the actual things are working now. <laughs> the notifications. Yeah, I see them. They've been coming up. Have they? I've not noticed them. Yep, yep, they have. Uh, but then you have awesome games like this. Stop. See? Daytona! And I used to spend so much money on the arcades. Um, Bob, the only thing that the advantage of owning a game studio versus money hatting the studio is if you rent from a studio, if you buy the exclusivity of the studio and the game flops... The studio will have layoffs. It'll have setbacks. Uh, future games will be less. You know, the games may not be good. They'll have to rush out games just to try and get something out. When the studio is owned, well, not so much in the case of Sony, but you have a chance of the studio having less likely of layoffs or less chances of delays. Did anyone ever play this game? Uh, Panzer Dragoon? Saga. Mm, I can't remember. Maybe. This was so good. I, I remember, right? In the UK, they released limited quantities of this game. I've still got it, the box. It's so rare. Um, and... I rang up Tottenham Court Road. Oh, I rang everywhere to find it at the time. No one had it. It sold out. And then I rang up uh, Tottenham Court Road and they said, yeah, we've got one copy in. 
and it was like six o'clock in the evening and I said can you hold it for me for tomorrow that's like a school day right and I had to mm -hmm. basically uh, bunk a school day I went with my friend all the way down to Tottenham Court Road just to get it because they said they would only hold it till midday right I skipped like I got into so much trouble back then when I was a kid with my, from my mom <laughs> when she found out because the school called her up asking where I was and obviously back then we didn't have mobile phones and stuff, so uh, I came home all really happy with my uh, copy of uh, Panzer Dragoon. I waited outside until like 4 o'clock, 4.15, 4 so I'd come home at the right time and my mum was waiting for me. Yeah, it didn't end well. But I still had my do, game. Do I think the layoffs could become the status quo in gaming? No. I don't think so. So there's a lot of these layoffs happening, right? Um, and a lot of people aren't understanding that a lot of these layoffs are for multiple reasons. Uh, number one, the tech industry as a whole is in a massive downturn. Whether it's because of AI or whatever it is, uh, in general... Also recovering COVID. It's in a massive downturn, right? Um, but the biggest problem is, as Power just said, is COVID. During COVID, publishers, platforms, everything, they overhired dramatically to meet demand. During those two, three years, the amount of money that you know these publishers made overall was the highest revenue output and profits that they've ever done since their existence as a company. They profited yep. heavily on COVID because everyone was at home Everyone was playing games. No one was at the pub buying drinks. No one was going out clubbing. No one was going out on a drinking spree. No one was doing anything. Not going to restaurants. Not going, uh, doing, you know, even takeaway places were not available in a lot of areas. So all of that extra money that people would normally spend outside, they ended up spending on video games. And then the demand because they for had video no games. Yeah, they had nothing else to do. And so the demand for video games went up. And as the demand went up, publishers were like, oh shit, we can't actually supply it enough. Quick, hire more, bring more people in. And so they brought in an influx of new talent. And that new talent delivered on the games that they needed to deliver. But guess what? Sooner or later, the government said, hey, you can actually go out and touch some grass now. We're giving you permission. And so when people mm -hmm. opened up the window and they said, holy shit, this is what the outside looks like. I forgot what it did. And then they went outside and was like, oh, man, this is this is a whole new world. God damn. This is like me exploring it all over again. What is over now, there? I will say and then they went off and started walking off and they didn't come home for the whole day and they actually enjoyed that. And then they started spending their money <laughs> on pub drinks and pub crawls and going to the cinema and going to the restaurants or ordering takeaway. That meant less money for video games. So the money spent on video games, as we've seen year on year, has been going down. And as a natural consequence to that bubble being burst, that COVID bubble, the demand for video games has gone down and down. And so if the demand for video games has gone down and down and the money spent on video games is, uh, per year has gone down and down, that means there's surplus mm. developers. What happens to surplus developers? They get cut they off get and sent away, right? This is all a natural process. People losing their minds about the layoffs and this happening. It was always going to happen, right? It was always so going to happen. It was not a matter of if, but when. And we're just seeing that effect now. That's it. So, so, Bob Smith, you said that Game Pass is a good service, but I do think it has conditioned Xbox gamers not to buy games, but only to play stuff on Game Pass. Um, there is an ex-Blizzard developer. I don't remember his name, but I know, uh, oh no, it's Alex has covered him quite a few times, where he disproves that alone. Okay, because there was a $11 microtransaction in StarCraft, I think it was. I think it was StarCraft. Uh, where it sold more than, or no, it was some other cosmetic that 
was able to be purchased for eleven dollars that sold more than all of Starcraft two development combined. So whether or not Game Pass is successful and conditioned to not buy games, yes. Um the what they haven't done is capitalized on that microtransaction market. If it is good and it is worth it and people find value in it, no matter whether it has actual pay to win benefits in a game or not, Hell Divers 2 is a perfect example. 90% of the things that you can buy, whether you pay real money and buy it now or you know, farm in game and get it at your leisure. Um, if it is worth it and people find value in it, even if it's stupid things like parodies of getting, say, Homer Simpson skin in Fortnite, people will find value for it. If it's cheap enough, they will pay it. And the more things that they make that people want, the more people will buy it. Yeah. Uh, two points that I saw here. Games are still $70, though. Correct. Because they are going to charge you every penny that they can make. And why wouldn't they? They're not going to reduce mm. the price of games because once they go up, they're just not going down. This is why them going up was silly. But that's the whole point. And to answer Bob's point as well, it's anecdotal. I'm not saying that there wasn't casualties of war in this where these publishers turned around and said, right, instead of getting rid of 200 people, let's push it to 300 people. That clearly happened, right? But it kind of got swept under that whole rug of we've overemployed, we don't need these people, so we're uh, cutting off the fat and then trimming some off as well. I'm not saying that didn't happen, but the mass layoffs that we're seeing is because of COVID. And Bold Alpha, you are absolutely 100% correct. Try the game model before you buy it. Rather than having to try and buy it and then refund it if you don't like it or you finish with it. Man, this because for as long bad. as you have... Game, I know. But for as long as you have downloaded it, you own it. The U.S. is in a recession. That's why the U.S. is an epoxy to wars. That's why we are fun of these wars. I mean, the U.K. has been in a recession for years now. They've been struggling to get out because uh, <laughs> way too much was spent during COVID, right? You know, that, that whole COVID situation cost a lot of countries a lot of money with the whole... Uh, what was that furlough program? I'm not sure if you had that in the US. I'd have to look. It but might furlough be was basically names. where the government would pay 90% of someone's salary in order for you to keep them employed while they were unemployed. Yeah, so they we have something like that. So basically they'd be sitting at home getting paid to do nothing while uh, they were getting 90% of their salary. And so what was most people doing? They were using that 10% for their holidays. And getting maximum salary, and the government, the companies were saving shitload of money, uh, paying their staff ten percent rather than ninety percent. Um, but it still costs the governments a lot of money. Uh, yeah, but that's always going to be a problem, Jez. That's always going to be a problem. But yeah, like uh. There's obviously a bit of that happening as well, right? Where they're shaving off the top more than they need to because companies don't care about the bottom line, the little people. They just yep. care about making profit. Everything is profit. Now, you, a company can be seen as being pro-consumer, but if it's not making them profit, then they won't be pro-consumer. And as for games being 70 bucks they're not going to change. And this is why I say games don't need to be a hundred bucks. Make a good game and it will sell. It's that simple. If you don't make a good but game, see, 
it's not going to sell. The best thing about the whole try before you buy that Sarah Bond made uh, Reborn, which is an excellent point, is that for me, if I don't like a game, I won't get it. If it's a game that I think could be um, something that I might like, but I'm not willing to try, then that's something that I can look through when it comes to games that are lesser known. Like, we had 14 games in there. There's only about maybe three or four of them that I'm excited for. But if I happen to finish all of those, and there's nothing out that's around, then, hell, I may try and pick up one or two of those other ones. And it's at no extra cost to me, because I'm already paying and subscribing to Game Pass. Take it easy, Jacob. Yep, see you, Jacob. Uh, Twitch hasn't been working correctly lately because of their monetization, their policies, their rules. A lot of it has been really uh, anti-creator. I mean, they Mm -hmm. take 50% of everything you make. So if you're not like right now, I don't make a lot off of what I do. Right. But if I was over it, but I get 70% of what I'm making. YouTube takes 30%. And then, uh, and that's including my, that's including the taxes and stuff. So if I was to go over to Twitch, they take 50% and then I have to pay additional taxes on top. Like, as a small creator, I make close to nothing there, which is why I stopped making content over at Twitch. Like, for a small creator, it's just not financially worth it. For someone like Asmongold, it absolutely is. But, you know, the super chats I get here, I get 70% of. The subs that... uh, Gifted subs or people subbing themselves, I get 70% of. And, you know, it, it helps. But it's just a higher percentage that you get here. So absolutely Twitch, reborn. It's just not it doesn't reward creators if you're small. And the biggest scam that Twitch did is the affiliate program. That is the biggest scam that they've ever done. I qualify for it now, by the way. Cool. But the biggest scam that they did was the affiliate program because that gives you the sense that you've made it. But all it does is it actually works against you. Because oh. if you're not an affiliate, you've got a much greater chance of growing your channel because when people mm-hmm. come to your stream, they're not immediately thrown in with an advert because, you know, there's no monetization enabled. There is no adverts because you're not monetized. But the moment you become an affiliate, You've got three viewers, and then suddenly they've got like five minute adverts. They're not going to stick around. Someone jumps into your channel, and you've got like four viewers, and they get hit with a you know a, t- a one minute advert. They're leaving straight away, and that's it. You've just lost that viewer. Yeah. So, the whole concept of affiliate is just a massive scam way for Twitch to basically. Make more money of you. And don't forget, if you don't hit the threshold for a year because you're a small channel, like you you might get the odd person every now and then coming and subbing to you. But if you don't make that threshold of $100, I think it is, or is it $70, something like that. I think it's been reduced now. I haven't checked. But if you don't make that money within that year, Twitch takes the whole thing. Yep. And you get nothing. Nothing at all. So let's say, for example, the threshold was $100 and you made $99 by the end of the year. Twitch takes all of that $99 and you go back to square one in the new year. Pretty nasty shit. The same guy, Pirate Software, showed a calculator on how much Twitch pays to stream. It's a lot of money they are burning cash to host on some of these streams. Yeah. Yep. 
I can agree with that, but at the same time, you want more people to, you know, you want more people to be streaming to make money. That's really the way it is. A acute perspective, how's it going? There you go, just got, got, it, got it in one. Consumerism depends on permanent expansion. The bubble always bursts. Yep. It always does. And the last recession we had um, was when uh, Tony Blair was our Prime Minister. And I can't remember his name. Gordon Brown, I think his name was, or something like that. Uh, our Chancellor back then. He warned that there is going to be a massive burst coming our way. Huge burst. And he warned that this is coming. And when it did, we hit a massive recession. Man, who remembers that controller? <laughs> You'll see it now. This is what yeah, the Dreamcast controller was modeled after. Yep, I know. She that, that was good. Did anyone play this game before? Burning Rangers. I had to import this from the US because it wasn't released in Europe. That controller right there, man. That's sick. Love it. I've got. I've actually got one upstairs somewhere. But I had to import <laughs> this from, I think, either the US or Japan um, in order to play it because uh, it wasn't released. I'd love this to be remade. This was cool. Oh, did you ever look at those um, Harmon videos? I haven't looked at the latest ones, but it's just him gloating about Nintendo, right? Well, when isn't he gloating about Nintendo? I mean, the fact that they closed no. Yuzu. Specifically Yuzu. Yeah. And Power World again. He is super happy about that. Mm-hmm. Hey, they're still good. I still play them on emulators. I wish they kind of remade some of these games because that would be sick. Like, Burning Rangers would be awesome. I used to like my uh, shoot 'em ups. Uh, not sure if anyone likes those games. Uh, do Don Pachi Daijo Boo, I think it was called. Yeah. This shit was insane. <laughs> I used to love these games. Remember the old Smash TV? Yep. Let's look at uh, I like the Raiden games. Where's the boss? Where's the, where, where's it go crazy? This is like the first level. Yeah. But when you got to the... <laughs> it's like... <laughs> you know, interestingly enough, I never knew anything about Darkstalkers until I played Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I, I was... I was, I guess, enthralled by the gameplay of uh, Felicia on occasion. I mean, she wasn't one of my favorite characters to use, but I started digging deeper into the lore of where each of the characters, because that still has the single largest character selection in any video game out there. Look at that. And it was a PS2 game. Or PS3 game. <laughs> PS3 game. Yep, her and Morgan. Holy shit. Jesus, that's nuts. That's crazy. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> How do you do that? Holy hell. Yeah. Hey, that ego hit there. What that is. 
But this is crazy. Um, yeah. But what is it? What is the future of emulation? We don't know. We actually don't know right now. Um, at the moment, I think emulation is still going to be okay because the emulator itself does nothing. Oh my god, that just, just, just how man? Look at look at the look at the micro movers. Uh, the emulators themselves don't do anything. So I think on that regard, it's going to be okay. I think uh, the way they got in through to Yuzu was, you know, done f from accessing them, well, basically infiltrating them for a thing. Uh, means that aren't through the emulator itself. But oh, yeah, so I know Dark Souls started in the arcades. Uh, don't forget, Nintendo was inside the Yuzu Discord for months collecting information. Yep. Months collecting information. Um, and they had all the receipts. So Yuzu really screwed themselves over by doing this. Yeah, quite a bit. And, you know, the way they got Yuzu mm -hmm. was because they were charging for the emulator. And they didn't really get them through that, but that just gave them the the door they needed opened to approach. <laughs> this is really intense gameplay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get like like uh, the Final Fantasy VII first stream I did, I got copyright strikes for music in that game, the in-game music on three separate areas in that chapter one. I'm seeing people getting copyright strikes in chapter three, four, five, uh, seven. Nothing in two. But it's crazy. I just hit uh, chapter nine. But, you know, if there's not much news uh, tomorrow, I might do a, another Final Fantasy VII stream tomorrow just so I can progress that a little bit more because I do want to get those play a little bit more on stream. Oh, who knows? Maybe do a bit of Redfall or something. Because I want to finish that. Hey, if you well. do Redfall, I'll join you. I haven't played Redfall yet. Uh, but the problem is, uh, Sappho, they're making money off an emulator that doesn't do anything. So, it's still okay. They're not making money off proprietary hardware or software. The product keys, they're not supplying. The firmware, they're not supplying. And without those two, which they're not providing you, that software is useless. But the fact that they were charging for it is how they managed to get it to go to court. Oh, that uh, Tales of Kinzera Zao game is 20 bucks, or discounted to 18 with Game Pass. That's not bad. See, if it's priced at those prices, it will sell. Yeah. And like I said, the story behind the creator of that, it, it's a really touching story. I hope it does right. decently well. It's not going to be huge, but I hope it does decently yeah. well. Uh, Square Enix isn't the one that's... Uh, they're not the one that's copywriting. It's some Brazilian company that Square is... Yeah. Uh, I've reached out to my Square Enix uh, contact and they're trying to deal with it. But it's not Square that's actually copywriting. And they're doing what they need, what they can to try and get all the copyrights cancelled. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that they, they are going to be cancelled. What's with the Sailor Moon all of a sudden? What? Sailor Moon. Like, Who is this Phillips person? I don't know who he is. I'm not even... Why am I following him? No idea. I don't even know who that Phillips person is. When did I follow him? Although, fun story, my friend's uh, Google Home got hacked. So his house was a disco lights show for about half an hour. <laughs> they tried to get access to his account. 
Hey, I like Sailor Moon too, but I don't want my timeline plastered with it. <laughs> I have a separate account for wifeys. We don't talk about that account. Understood. Oh God, there's somebody actually saying from Kotaku that you can't be racist against white people. Wow. Oh, there's a reason why Sailor Moon was trending? Okay. I mean, Ben, at least they didn't take any legal action, right? And if you're going to do something like that on your actual Xbox account, you've got to be real stupid. Right, you've got to be real stupid if you're going to do something like that on your main account. Has anyone played this game? Mini Settlers? No, Guilt. Oh. Why is my stream lagging? I cannot recommend this game enough. I'm actually tempted to buy it just to stream it for you guys. It is such a good game. I really, really... This was literally... the. It's a really small game, as you can see, right? It's like three hours long. This was one of the only games I ever... This was a uh, Stadia exclusive. Um, and I really enjoyed this game. It's got a pretty decent story. Um, and the narrative is actually done well. Got some nice puzzles in there. It's really cheap. It's worth it. I really want to. I want to pick up the physical of this because I enjoyed it so much. I'm trying to find some of the creatures so you can actually see. Maybe this is where you get to see the creatures first. So, question for everybody in chat: Have you all seen the latest post from IGN about Hell Divers Two? There you go. There's the creatures. Nerf the breaker, railgun, and shield generator backpack, three items considered to be essential to higher difficulty play that people, if you weren't choosing those and bringing them in, were kicking you out immediately. But they buffed other weapons that were weaker and stratagems as well. You got to download the Switch version? <laughs> But seriously, this game is really good. Um, I don't mind streaming this game. I really, really like it. And the developers are really cool. Um, but it's got a really nice story. Um, and if you do actually play this game, seriously, uh, you've got multiple endings at the end. Two multiple endings at the end. A good and a bad. I guess neither of them are bad endings. It's a choice you have to make as a person on what you want to do. On how you want to end it. The game. And there is a safe state. So you can. Um, decide, you know you can reload. And get both endings if you want to. But I'd love to know what your thoughts are. On the ending you choose. If, if you do play it and finish it. Because uh, yeah. This game I highly rate. I highly recommend. Good game. All right, so you're talking about IGN, right? Yeah, they had a post uh, about Helldivers 2 and oh, is the nerfs. Humble Bundle? It is. Oh, here you go, folks. Humble Bundle. You can get Made of Skur. You can get whatever that is. And whatever that is. <laughs> mail time, so whatever that is. Uh, Swadra, yeah, you can get that too. You can get Absu. Absu. If you're interested, yeah. and you can get guilt. Good game, okay, this one. Ninety-seven sure. percent positive on Steam. And all you have to—that's not bad. And then you can. No. Argo. I am. 
Clearly, she's just a look to the mirror. But let's have a look at the IGN. Yes. IGN, what are you doing? What aren't they doing? The Xbox Final Showcase has begun. Uh, first. This one? Uh, no. Not that one. <sighs> Man, I, I actually want to sit down and play Persona 3 now. I've got too <laughs> many games to play, chat. And they only want you to play Kong and Golem. What I used to do when I used to stream over at Twitch is uh, actually use my time on Twitch when I used to stream. I used to set like two days up and just yeah, play through games that I wanted to play through and just finish them on stream. <laughs> just yep. so I could have some time to get through some games. I'll tell you what I'm really enjoying right now, though. And you're going to be very surprised. I've started playing it on oh. uh, xCloud on my Steam Deck. You're going to be really surprised. Like, I, I started it before and I kind of put it down because, you know, lol, meme, whatever. Pentiment. I'm actually uh, really, oh yeah. really enjoying it at the moment. Okay. Um, it, you know, the, the choices you get, the story that's being told is actually quite interesting. Let me find this. Good. Devastator. Let me find this article just to see. Kong. I was close. Having a favorite toy nerfed absolutely sus sucks. Asks players to give changes a chance. The game's first balance patch, developer Arrowhead has discussed the thinking behind changes to weapons and stratagems, calling on players to give them a chance. Ah, so they've had their first nerf wave. Of course they did. Uh, here's the actual article. Let me send it to you. Devastator, you gave it an 8 out of 10? Really? I gave it a 6. I gave it a 6 because of Final Fantasy fourteen. There you go, I sent you the article. Helldivers 2 first Spanish match nurse the breaker railgun the breaker railgun and shield generator backpack. Three items considered essential to higher difficulty play and Helldivers 2's best loadouts, but also buffs weaker weapons and stratagems. Okay, what's wrong with that? Because when people were joining into multiplayer lobbies, if they didn't have those three uh, items, the breaker, the railgun, and the shield generator backpack, people were just kicking people out of groups. Yep. So this is what happens when you do that. This is a direct consequence of doing that. You know, yep. back when uh, the Galahorn on Destiny, no Galahorn, you get kicked out. Guess what happened to the Galahorn? Yep. Got nerfed. Nerfed Hard. to the ground. Exactly, Quackers. Exactly. Have you tried non-steam? Yeah, I'm using Ubisoft Connect. I'm using Epic Game Store. Uh, what else am I using? I've got GOG installed, but I don't use it. I haven't installed Origin because I think I've got like two games on there. There was a surprising amount of interesting titles in the preview. Uh, yeah, yeah. there was a diverse set of titles. I don't, I, you know, I could see some people giving it maybe a seven at most, but. I like mean, said, I gave it a six. The thing for me was that some of the stuff there we had already seen. Uh, GeForce Now is the best in terms of cloud gaming. Yeah. Right? Nothing's going to beat that. Is the thing over here, Xbox presentation. So cool.
And Devastator wants you to do a Final Fantasy fourteen stream. And you're waiting to play it on Xbox because of the whole account linking thing, right? Yes. I mean, whether I play it on the Xbox or the PC, it won't matter. Um, because we'll all be... As long as you're on the EU servers, we'll be, we'll be able to play together. Because it's, it's all multi-platform. Everyone plays together. The only thing separating it is the region. Like I said, this one actually interested me. Uh, this one was kind of cool. This is CGI, so it's a pass from me until I see the game. Uh, mm -hmm. This was just too much like Shelter. I don't know. It looked weird. It didn't look... It looked odd. This one did not interest me. My kids will love uh, this. I will get alters and I will stream it. And hell, I'll bring you on my Twitch and we'll go over it. And we'll go through it that way. Yeah. Uh, the Sinking City I had interest in. So that's two. Uh, looked Final interesting, 14, yeah. It's a 10 year old game. Like, I know it's coming yep. new for Xbox, but I can't get excited for a 10 year old game. Uh, Stalker Original Trilogy. Again, these games are super old. Monster Jam was. I, I don't see that doing very well. This actually was interesting for all the wrong reasons because we're seeing for the first time. The expansion uh, pass stuff and seeing, Ultimate, yeah. Well, we're seeing something come only to Game Pass Ultimate. Yep. Uh, the first Berserker was cool, even though the frame rates were kind of scuffed. So that's a nice little line there. Uh, Tales of Kanzara was, eh, but it's like, what, 12 quid? So I can see it. Frostpunk, uh, not 18. my style. I'm, it's 20. $18, but for the in the UK, it will be priced differently. And Kanitsu was weird enough that I might have a look at it. So for me, it was mm -hmm. just these four here, really. I want to see more of what Frostpunk 2 offers. I just it's not so much the game. Yeah, I just don't like the genre. It's not for me. The game can be I didn't absolutely play the, first one. the best sort of RTS game in the world. It's just not for right. me. Right. I like RTSs. Are but I'm also somebody who grew up with like Starcraft. To your party when you stream uh, stream what exactly? I mean, I'm always happy to invite people onto the. I think you mean uh, Final Fantasy 14 stream. Oh, if people wanna, if people are playing and wanna jump on, yeah, sure. I can bring people in. I mean, usually I like to do at least one day of uh, trying to get people on just to have an opinion. You have no idea how hard <laughs> it is to get people to jump on to have an opinion. And I'm happy for you, Sefa. Like. Not everyone has to be a miserable lump like me. That only oh, me for... too, Bald Alpha. I am really excited for a Raw. Um, a Raw looks very fun. You know, so, like, obviously, 14, I like. I've, I've been playing since uh, 1.0. Like, the original Final Fantasy 14. The one that got shut down. Right, right. I feel so gutted that uh, my internet went out. At the time, Aww. and I missed the you know where they give like a permanent discount and the extra chocobo to those people that were legacy players. I right. missed it by two weeks because my ISP disconnected my internet for four weeks, and I couldn't get onto a uh, at the subscription to get it. I was so. But I agree, Devastator. That. Sleight of hand could be interesting. Oh, it could be depending but, on the gameplay. It, it just showed CGI, so we don't know. Yeah, that that's why I kind of. I've not put sleight of hand into it. I didn't see any gameplay. There was no gameplay for it. But if Roblox we... appeals to kids. Roblox. <laughs> it's Roblox. My kids are going to love it. Right. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see something. Uh... <laughs> I don't remember much of Unknown Nine Awakening. To me, that was a kind of forgettable. Mm. 
No, Avowed has not gotten an announced release date yet. Uh, I will say, though, um, when I was watching IGN uh, before it went live, it was like 22 minutes before it went live, they were showing like extended gameplay, and they showed something of Avowed that actually looked good. So my kid actually plays um, Roblox. Roblox. So what was it called? Roblox Grief Fill. Yeah. I want to. I want to get your opinion on this. Okay. Here's what I, I would say. Not green. Hmm. <laughs> Why is it going? Got a love auto correct. Excellent speller right now. Best in the West. I'm, I'm confused. What are you trying to type? I agree, Invictus. This. I want to know what your opinions on this. Okay. What do you think about it? It's it's Roblox. I don't care. I mean, they've 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 been playing a lot since. Is, this is a, it? Is it something that you'd play with your friends? Probably. Yeah, I know, Devastator. I'm sitting in her chat. You can't say that's not decent animation, man. Like, not back on Roblox, at least. I think they do a good job on game. Chat, can you hear him? Yep. What with the limited stuff that they have? They make Let him see the gameplay. He he's just watching it now. This is it. Yeah, I know. Yes. You can't make a little shadow runny. Look. <clears throat> it's not bad, but again, it doesn't look amazing. But it's not bad. Would you play it? I don't know, probably. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> probably. So you and your friends would definitely give this a go and play it for at least a little bit. Okay. It's a f no, no, you no, would. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. October... Yeah. You're playing a Roblox horror game, a 15 minute one. And I'll tell you, if you don't shout, yeah, yeah. then I'll do whatever you want for a week. But if you shout. Shit, boys, there's a challenge. Shout, challenge. Stream, oh, stream, Lord. You're hearing that chat. There stream, is a challenge in October for Halloween. You even make a face. A face. No, there no, no. I, so you said scream. As a scream. You said scream. If I a scream. A squeak, a scream, a shriek, whatever. Then. You have to do that for me. Okay. Right, she chat, did not I, think I need you guys to help me. Click on it. Click on it. All right, chat. We need to figure out a way for me to be completely gagged to make no sound at all. Nope. Nope. No sound at all. <laughs> I need your help. Pass your suggestions on Discord. Oh, I got one right now for you. Hide under the covers and scare your ass. Stream gonna... it on Twitch and do the uh, ban. The ban with the channel points. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but then I can't. I I need to not <laughs> reactively say anything. But yeah, you, that's the whole you, point. You threw the smackdown down, boy. We'll see in October. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> right, Nate, you heard it there first. But as you can see, he's excited for <laughs> the Chucky. Chucky game. So this is going to appeal to like millions. Like honestly, out of all of these games here, that's going to make the most money. Probably. That's going to make more money than all of these combined. That's the. Sad I want to see new information about the altars. Alders and Frostpunk 2 are honestly the two that I have the highest interest in. Oh, Susano, it gets to me. I am, I am. I remember going to the cinema and watching the film Boogeyman. I was a wreck watching that film. <laughs> I was Damn. fucking messed up. 
see the missus next to me again. You okay? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what games on Game Pass could we possibly multiplayer. <laughs> I hope Avowed gets more polish before release. To me, the last showing combat looked stiff and impact looked like bonking. I expect the game and story to be full on. Would like more. I mean, it's a double A game. It's not triple A. But we haven't had a. I mean, even. Uh, I think, like, uh, Hellblade 2 is really going to be the first kind of high quality production game that we've had in a long time. Um. But outside of Hellblade 2, we haven't really had a game on Xbox that graphically has blown us away. That I can think of. That's Oh yeah, Dead Island 2. We could do that. Have you tried Dead Island 2 yet? Um, I'm almost finished with it on PlayStation. I'm almost done with it. I think I got it for Xbox, and it's on Game Pass now. Yeah, because I was playing it with... Uh... At the time when the publisher gave me a copy to stream on Twitch, when I used to stream on Twitch, right, I was playing multiplayer with a friend of mine, um, and then he just stopped playing, and I've kind of been waiting for him to finish it. Uh, I don't remember if Awakening or Unknown Awakening is going to be on Game Pass or not. I don't remember. Nope. You can see from the list on the screen right now. Only the ones that have oh, the yeah. Game Pass I have Game Pass on it. That's so, true. Persona Free Reload is Game Pass Ultimate only. Frostpunk, Five Game Pass, Ku one Game Pass Ultimate. Kunitsu is Game Pass. Sleight of Hand, Alters. But what we want to see here, right, chat, is a third-party banger, maybe two or three of them, that's going to shift Xboxes. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Have you seen my driving on Forza Horizon? <laughs> yeah, everyone has seen it because I've demoed it more than once. I can tell you, I've got a lot of insults and a lot of tomatoes thrown at me. Battletoads is worth four hours. Uh, it, Bornaya, all it needs is a few uh, third-party exclusives that are big, massive, and it'll bounce back. Or it, it really depends if Xbox, well, Phil wants to do it, and I think he does. But he's currently, as we, you know, as we had a big discussion earlier on with the whole uh, shackled ABK situation stuff. with the FTC, that needs to go away. And then we'll see it happening. But that's my opinion. I mean, will they? Will it be enough for them to win the console war? No. Will it be enough for them to sell a good number of consoles? Yes. But like I was saying to people, uh, for me, this, this generation, because of the FTC, they're just going to write the F Series X off. That it, it's just the FTC has taken too much. It's just cost them too. You know the ABK deal has just cost them too much money. It just has. I wonder if you can use your PlayStation save. Is it crossplay? What is Dead Island Two? I don't know. I was just looking that up myself. Yeah, find it first. <laughs> uh, it's not just on console game. Pa oh, yeah, it's not on PC Game Pass. Right, that's what you mean. I 
Uh, who knows? Who knows, Devastator? What's going? What's going on with Gamatsu? Remove the Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy equals PlayStation console exclusive article as the Washington Post issued a correction. Sony Interactive Entertainment never actually said the trilogy was console exclusive. You've heard it here, boys! It's not exclusive! Oh, it's not exclusive. You can go and laugh at all the pony bots. Or, not the pony bots, but all the ponies now. Go on. Yep. Out there. Go point at them and start laughing. They celebrated their victory for all of 0 0.7 seconds. And it only took Love. 0 0.8 seconds to uh, clarify the truth. I am clarifying the second point. It was a mistake on my part to write the sentence like that. The entire Gene Park. Who is Gene Park? Oh, uh, he's a... Uh... The entire Final yeah, Fantasy VII trilogy yeah, is true. not yet confirmed to be Sony exclusive. The article has been amended to only mention remake and rebirth. Yep. The third game would technically be the uh, integrated DLC. You know the whole thing is going to be exclusive anyway. But for now, you can go and laugh at them. Yep. You can Probably go and laugh at them now. You can go and laugh at them. Mm-mm-mm. Honestly, at this point, I just don't see any reason why Square Enix would port it. That might sound horrible. Not a PC, but... Again, since some people are asking me about the latest round of Starfield rumors, I'll say definitively I have great sourcing that nobody is working on Starfield or PlayStation right now. That is Phil Spencer's source. Nobody knows what the longer term future holds, but don't expect any time soon. That's it. And that is the correct response. Yep. From Jez Corden. It even came up in the FTC versus Microsoft that Xbox started. Final Fantasy is never coming to Xbox. Stated that Microsoft. Is... It, I mean, Final Fantasy is being its thing. But see, Sappho, that's not correct, right? That's not true. Because Microsoft, as we found out, was offered Final Fantasy 16 first as a console exclusive, and they turned it down. They turned it down. So, they could have accepted it, and that would have shifted consoles. End of story. It would have shifted consoles. What the hell is this? Soon Devastator, playing <laughs> through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth myself, and on Chapter 9, I am very, very disappointed in what they've done with the game. But it still would sell... Sh Look, are you telling me, regardless of how disappointed you are, that if Final Fantasy VII Remake was released as an exclusive on Xbox at the time, it wouldn't sell Xboxes? Um, is, is that what you're trying to tell me? If you say no, you're lying. I don't think it would have sold consoles, but I do think it would have done about as well as no way. Hold on PlayStation. Yep. No way. It would have shifted consoles like there's no tomorrow. It would. The only reason why I say no is if they did not put it in Game Pass. It wouldn't be on Game Pass. Why would it be on Game Pass? Square Enix ain't going to put that on Game Pass. They actually want sales. <laughs> there's no reason for them to put it on Game Pass. The game will sell on its own. 
it would shift consoles. It doesn't matter what, if people like the game or not, it will still shift consoles. <laughs> What's that? Why do I feel that it wouldn't have sold well on Xbox Sapo? Uh, performance mode it is, yes. There you go, look at this. And Xbox does love releasing their controllers, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, really got an Xbox One because of Final Fantasy XV. This isn't me just saying this. It's normal in my buying habits. Big franchises sell consoles. That's just the way it is. Now, how many of you are buying I mean... this? Come on, own up. Like, I know Crusader someone in chat is going to buy this. Buy what? What's on screen right oh, now? Oh, the it, my stream is lagging. SpongeBob Xbox Series X. No. Come on, someone in chat wants this. I know it. Own up. Des. Des. There you go, yeah, Ventura wants one and two. <laughs> now, Devastator, I would agree with you, except for the fact that FF7 was one of the greatest Final Fantasies of its time because it was the first time that a game had 3D graphics, even though it was polygonal. It was very groundbreaking for its time. The fact that they're changing the storyline, I think, is the reason why it's not going to do as well as it could have. Yo, know, people have too much money. <laughs> uh, if the PS5 Pro mm -hmm. is 800 bucks, I think I'll skip it. If it's more than 400, I'm going to skip it. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Valhalla wandering stats on foot, speed down, handling blisters, jumping off a cliff into a pile of leaves, speed handling blisters, grace. <laughs> that is so true. That's funny. <laughs> what the fuck? That is so sick. That series S. Now that is awesome. Come on, that looks come on, that looks good. Floating controller stand, yeah. That reminds me, I may watch that tomorrow. Dune two. Just watch the two uh other first ones. Not too long ago. Minecraft education. Yeah, let's do it. Latin explorers. Oh, no. That's going to trigger a whole fan base. Oh, really? That's interesting. What? It's a Gundam. As Fritanga, as a co-host. Oh, really? That's cool. Any Are they live now, Devastator? 
It might be. Atlas Commander's Guidance Unicorn Overlord. It's a RTS game. Yeah. I've seen a little bit on Unicorn Overlord. Launch date reveal for Warzone Mobile. Okay. March 21st. Don't have to watch the trailer anymore. What a dumb. (laughs) That's in 15 minutes. Well, okay, okay. I'll be done shortly myself, so. <laughs> Lamball and Depresso inspired controllers. I mean, Microsoft That's do a awful. lot of controllers. Have you seen the Fallout controllers? Yeah. How to create the ultimate PC gaming setup. Oh, Lord. What's this? Just stay hydrated with four chicken nuggets and mini They're waffle. They're just going to talk about fucking game uh, X Cloud, aren't they? The hell is Pen Freddy? What in the absolute hell? Mouse and keyboard. That's just wrong. I don't even get what the whole point of this is. Yes. I don't either. I mean, they've got a cal- they've got a carrot there and some pens and some loose wires. <laughs> it's just awkward. I don't know anymore, chat. We haven't. We can maybe watch one. Okay, somebody actually responded to me on Twitter about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So my original post was that I love the original Final Fantasy VII, but Rebirth is a massive disappointment on many fronts to me. And somebody responds says he's still on chapter two and about eight hours or so in, but he says it's feeling more like Far Cry than Final Fantasy. Say that again? And I think uh, that he says that playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, that it's more like Far Cry than Final Fantasy. Uh, I can see that. I mean, they're just referring to the open world, right? Probably. But the open world was ex- existed in the original. So did the original feel like a Far Cry Two? Uh, I'm, I think he's just talking about the entire Far Cry series in general. But he's referring to the open worldness where you run around, especially in Chapter Three. I mean, even where I am in Chapter Nine, you don't stop running around the open world. Uh. Which one are we watching first? Well, which one are we watching? I'm, have we got time for one? Uh, chat, do you want to watch Nintendo has taken out Switch emulator user and 3DS emulator by the bellend? Or do we watch anti woke gamers refuse to admit that Western video games were always something? Um... Yeah, Bonaya, I agree. I don't think it's a. Uh, I think that's that's a that's a, that's a, that's, a, that's a stretch. Oh, it was just what somebody responded to me saying. I'm not saying I agree with it. Yeah, we can watch the second one that you mentioned. The boat gamers thing. discourse about that might have burst some people's ears this in the gaming media right now so i suppose i really should address this like sweet baby incorporated ah they're the ones ruining our western video games ah they were behind suicide squad and indiana jones and this and that like all these terrible games are the result of sweet baby incorporated now uh all your western games were always terrible (laughs) 
it has nothing to do with wokeness, right? This is the big thing that I have an issue with when it comes to, like, anti-woke culture right now, right? Is kind of the refusal to acknowledge that, like, Japanese gaming, game development has always been better than Western development. Like, the games have always looked better. They've played better. They have more interesting ideas. There's more varieties and genres. Like, they're not all first-person shooters or RPGs, right? Like, Japanese game dev is just better right and that is just objectively true from anyone who isn't a complete fanboy right you know same with Mar i mean they did create stella yams so maybe look Susanna, i agree it is subjective but they have stella blade that's all i'm saying And if you have seen what else the creators of St Stellar Blade have made, they made Nikkei. Okay, I'm just going to stop incriminating myself anymore. I'm just going to continue with the video. Manga, same with animation, same with like... You know that's not going to work. A lot of <laughs> things, really. Like, it, it's very, very apparent. And it really has nothing to do with woke culture at all. Because this has been, uh, this has been true for... Several, several it years. It is. Now, right? Like, just comparing something, uh, you know, the average Nintendo game to the kind of... But when this guy refers to Japanese, he's clearly talking the whole of Asia. Kind of crap that, that people eat up, like, endlessly. You know, the glitchy, janky messes that we get. Not um, just Japan. What the result of this is, the real issue is, I think, that Western game developers do not care about cultivating talent right they do not care Ouch. about making good games what they care about is is just getting as many people on board as possible hyping up their product as the next big thing Safa, you're 100 percent right they won't because at the end of the day sony has allowed these uh stuff to go through right and uh, becoming the next Fortnite, right? That's the goal, right? You know, you can complain about Suicide Squad all you want. You can complain about the wokeness of it all. But the real thing that really killed Suicide Squad in the eyes of the community was the gas, right? It was like the, the loot boxes. It was like the general setup. The, the kind of system that you defended when Overwatch made it popular in 2016, right? When Go Overwatch did it, it was like the coolest thing ever, right? In your eyes. But of course, like, slowly Overwatch started, like, becoming unpopular. And so, like, you had to find a scapegoat. Like, oh, it, it didn't used to be like this. It totally was. Uh, it didn't used to be like this. Like, Overwatch has gone woke. Oh, it, it, it's not like it was woke. No, no, Overwatch is changed. They used to have good videos online. And I ain't talking about the ones on YouTube. But they used to have good videos. And now uh, you don't find them anymore. Woke to begin with. Oh, no. Otherwise, then I wouldn't have played it. No. I need to just shut it up became now. woke, you know, sometime in between Overwatch 1 and 2, right? <laughs> like, that's the reason the game failed. Because because it was woke. It has nothing to do with the fact that the game could not maintain its audience audience's attention because it wasn't that good, right? <laughs> that is the real issue we've been having since Gamergate, right? This complete <laughs> unwillingness among the community to acknowledge that a game is bad until it completely fails, right? Like, we saw this with Destiny. We saw this with Overwatch. We saw this with... Uh, we saw this with, like, Evolve and, like, Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, Evolve was shit. No, there's no cap on that. That was shit. And like, uh, people are still trying to defend Cyberpunk 2077. Like, we, we saw this, like, over and over and over and over again with these games, right? We saw so many people, so, so, so many people try to convince you that, like, these Western-developed games were, like, these really exciting, interesting things that to look forward to, when in reality, like an average Nintendo release is like ten times better than it. Like, right? Like, I'm not super enthusiastic about Princess Peach Showtime, <laughs> but like, I don't think there's any denying that. Like, have you ever seen a female video game protagonist do as much as Princess Peach does in that game? Have you seen a girl like be a cowgirl, be a ninja, be a sword fighter, like bake a cake, like? Uh, 
He said Calgo, right? I ain't going any further than that. I I'm just saying he, he said Calgo. Like, do all of his crazy stuff like that Peach does in that game? No, right? The reality is nobody in the Western world would ever make, ever think to make a game like that. You know, like make. So, uh, Western gamers wouldn't want to make a game where a female character would do a cowgirl. Okay. Making uh, a figure, a, a game about figure skating Princess Peach and making it cool and interesting and exciting, right? You know, uh, Unicorn Overlord is coming out next week, right? Uh, as I record this, but he time said this it, not posted, me. It'll probably be out already, but like, um, Unicorn Overlord is on the way, right? What game dev? is going to put together a game like that, you know, an RTS game, like a strategy game in which you have like a bunch of sprites, like going at each other, right? <laughs> oh, that's stale. That's boring. It's unintuitive. Yeah. Uh, I have more fun with it than I do with Starcraft. You know, I have more fun with it than I do with like total Warhammer, right? The game is better put together. It has better characters, better artwork, better mechanics, more interesting, like a, a more interesting gameplay loop, right? Like unicorn overlord is simply better than the crap that I'm expecting to, like, gobble up on other consoles. You know, stuff like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, stuff like Tekken 8, stuff like, uh... Stuff like, uh... Yeah, that's it. His like, brain process went out. All this other, like, poor crap, right? Yeah, like, there, are just, like, there are just so many games... That would have there, to assume he has a brain stopped, process in the first right? place. Like, it's really not even close. And, uh... Unicorn Overland is an RTS game that's being released cross-platform. Uh, a big reason for that is because this is a game made for Japanese people by Japanese people. And as a result of that, they actually respect the, uh, the intelligence of the audience. They actually put out something that isn't going to appeal to everyone, and they make sure that product is top of the line quality they make sure that it's great they make sure that like it runs well it plays it has all this like uh replay value they make sure it's fun to play right like no western developer has ever done that right ever it's entirely fueled by profit margins it's entirely fueled by that this idea that like we're just in it to make money right like there is no real consideration as to like what people actually want to play right and i think the big issue with the with the video game space as a whole right now is that there's this very unwillingness very strong unwillingness to admit that japanese game development is superior and in particular nintendo is the best out of all of them right but i think he's clearly mistaken here i mean the best clearly is come stadia uh, developers, and then we've got the Oya developers. Uh, even the Neo Geo Pocket developers would probably come before uh, Nintendo at this point. Right? Like, it's kind of crazy considering how much you see people complain about Nintendo, but you can look this up, and, and people have brought this up too. It's not like, I, I'm not, this isn't some like major revelation. Like, Nintendo has no association with, association with Sweet Baby Incorporated. Like, it has relatively no woke stuff, and the games have become a, have continued to be extremely successful oh, and popular, right? Like Nintendo is killing it right now, right? To the point where like even the people who are like acknowledging that the gaming crash that I predicted ten years ago, right? Um, that that's happening right now. Like even the people who are doing that are kind of like, yeah, uh, Nintendo is going to survive, right? They are going to survive the gaming crash. I say differently. I think Nintendo is going to like um, establish their monopoly in this uh, hardcore gaming space over like uh, during this gaming crash, right? They're going to establish a monopoly chat, a monopoly. You know, there will be no third parties supporting the gaming PC. There will be like no new content being produced outside of Nintendo consoles. Like this is it. This is going to be Nintendo establishing themselves as like the king of hardcore gaming, right? And uh, it's not hardcore gaming, Nintendo, <laughs> my dude. What is it you're smoking? Because I'm sure a lot of people would like some. It's not something that people are going to be denying anymore. Like, it's not something you can just sit there and uh, be in denial about, right? Like, I I've addressed this before, but it really does feel as if, like, the hardcore left and the hardcore right, like, kind of converge on this issue. Like, pretending that Nintendo is evil, 
right? Either like they conform to gender roles and are an evil capitalistic, like um, evil game creator, or they're the most woke, like censorship happy development uh, development studio in the industry, right? You know, both sides religiously hate Nintendo, even though they produce the best games and the best hardware, right? Nintendo... You heard it here, folks. Nintendo has released the best hardware. Runs 4K, 120 FPS, uh, capable of the, you know, docked running 8K resolution. Shit, shit puts PlayStation and Xbox out of business. It even puts PCs out of business. Nintendo is objectively the best game, uh, game studio in the world right now and probably will be for at least the next 10 20 years like i considering the way they're set up like all, all their subsidiaries all their pot partnerships all, all their like um like everything they've done like i, I... Sappho, is that a typo or is that what i think it is because people are still enjoying h games i can tell you not me though i, I deny everything i have a hard time believing anybody is going to eclipse them Right, like I don't want to say it's completely impossible, but like, um, yeah, it's like Microsoft couldn't do it. If Sony couldn't do it, like, who who is? You know, like we we've seen how how these like massive conglomerates can't compete in the gaming space with Nintendo, right? You know, Sony doesn't produce the the, the handheld <laughs> PlayStations anymore. Xbox is straight up leaving the console space. Like, what exactly is meant to compete with Nintendo in the near future? Like, I I know retards like to say that like mobile is gonna do it, but like it hasn't. You know, like mobile has been a thing for 15 years, and the uh, it hasn't killed Nintendo. Like, you know, the biggest mobile phenomenon of, like, uh, the new 10s was Pokemon Go. So, like, you know, the way it looks to me is that, like, all of the phone games that casuals pick up and play are going to be, like, based off of Nintendo IPs. You know, it's going to be fire. How many games does Nintendo have that makes more money than Genshin Impact? Let's just make Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail combined. You know, they make $180 million a month. And that's on a bad month. On a good month, they'll break $200 million. So you're looking at, over the course of a year, you know, over $2 billion from one game. And the heroes, it's going to be Pokemon Go. It's going to be like, you know, the stuff they produce, right? Like, that stuff is going to continue to be popular and dominate on mobile spaces while Nintendo still produces high-quality, like, uh, hardware, uh, software exclusive to their hardware, right? Like, uh, there will be no destroying Nintendo, like, like so many people believe. Uh, and now, you're not seeing anybody acknowledge that, though. They are like what you're seeing now is people crying about how they can no longer like pretend that the Western gaming world is better than Nintendo. Like, oh, why have games gotten bad? Remember when Halo came out and how wonderful that was? Halo was never good. Remember Fuck you. Halo was amazing. It revolutionized gaming and it introduced the worst part of gaming as well with the invisible health bars that was so dumb. Mass Effect, Mass Effect is one of the most woke video game franchises ever made. You know, you literally have like lesbian space, uh, lesbian space elves that are deliberately set up to be like the most powerful, influential like, species in the galaxy, right? Like Mass Effect is one of the most woke video game franchises ever made. And yet you won't see people acknowledge it because it goes against the narrative, right? It goes against the, the commonly held belief that that uh that woke culture is relatively recent that it's only affecting modern games that it's um that it's going to be uh, driven out eventually by a uh, sheer unpopularity no like the reality is plenty of woke stuff the public enjoys is popular right we we've seen this happen time and time again um the real issue i think and, and the stuff that nobody talks about is that nobody actually cares about whether or not the video games are high quality. I mean, the Switch itself is an Android tablet, right? It was uh, NVIDIA's Integra tablet. It was supposed to be their next... Uh, tech, is it Integra? NVIDIA Shield, sorry, not Integra. Their next NVIDIA Shield um, console. 
and Nintendo liked it and decided that they wanted to buy it off NVIDIA. And so they did. And it became the Nintendo Switch. And it had the health bars, but then it had that whole... Uh, your body... What I was referring to was the whole screen getting bloody and red and annoying so you can't see anything. Right. The issue is that people will lap up anything as long as it has Superman in it, as long as it has Harry Potter in it, as long as it has Geralt of Rivia in it, as long as it has like D&D stamped on it. Like as long as it's part of an established brand that people recognize, you're going to see people like bend over and take it every single time until like the entire thing just collapses, right? And there have been a lot of examples over that over the years. You know, I think the most recent one, uh, Saints Row, right? Well, actually, Suicide Squad is more recent. But, like, you know, Suicide Squad, you know, this is supposed to be, like, an arc. I mean, it's, it's a good thing he didn't stick on Saints Row. They got shut down. They got shut down real quick. Come game, this is supposed to take place in that same continuity. You know, people were like lambasting that, like, oh, how dare they do this in the Arkhamverse? Hey, genius. You know, Arkham City already botched the lore. You know, like Arkham Knight is one of the worst games I've ever played in my life. Like, it's more of a Batmobile game than a Batman game, right? Like, Gotham Knights was a disappointment. Like, what were you expecting out of out of Suicide Squad? Really? Like, oh, I wanted I wanted to play a Superman in a in a triple A Arkham like style like adventure. It's never gonna happen, right? Like, there's a reason we don't get <laughs> Superman games. <laughs> like, it's just not an adaptable IP. Like, I would argue like uh, Batman isn't a, isn't an adaptable IP because like there are so many elements to it that I just aren't just aren't usable, right? Like, what did they do with Two Face in that entire like Arkham trilogy? Like, basically nothing, right? What have they done with what did they do with the like, lesser known characters? Nothing, right? The reality is Arkham was never a really particularly thought well thought out or engaging trilogy to begin with, but people gaslit themselves into thinking it was like the best thing ever. It is because, what? Oh, it's Batman. Ah, oh, uh, uh, you live long enough to be the hero, or you die a villain. Like <laughs> you, uh, you, you see people just like, just like, just eating this stuff up purely because they don't know any better, purely because they have no idea what makes a good video game. Right. And that to me is like has always been the worst problem about modern video games. Right. It has nothing to do with woke culture. It has nothing to do with Sweet Baby Incorporated. It has nothing to do yes, with you like know what should happen to anything to Anita Sarkeesian is doing. Like it comes from the simple fact that all of the best games in the industry, you know, stuff like the Wonderful 101, 13 Sentinels, uh, Penny's Big Breakaway, uh, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Like huh. all of these games that are just legit, ten out of ten I don't think I could tolerate Japan hates Xbox. You know, these amazing titles, these amazing releases that that come I know I can't. Them. Yeah, like they just get ignored. You know, every single time He's too I've much had of a racist, this, right? You know, how many times have I brought up just how disrespectful it is that people attack Bayonetta three or No More Heroes three? You know, games that are way better than like the much more popular Devil May Cry five, right? Like, how do people cope with Devil May Cry 5 being more popular? Oh, it's just better, but but it's not, though. Like, oh, but it is! Like, it, it's uh, it's just a complete cover. Oh, Hideki Kamiya will never produce a game as good as the original Devil May Cry. It's like... It is a complete joke, right? Anybody who, like, actually takes the time to play all these games and and knows what they are what they offer and like uh, like understands like you're always going to end up in the same place where like you this begin to loony. realize that nintendo is indeed the best in the industry but there i, I is can't with this, this anymore <laughs> refusal to acknowledge that that's way too close that's way too close I like that. No, I do want to stop by. It's over. <laughs> he violated my space. Uh, let's have one last look and see if there's anything actually here. Utter Unknown 9 looks utterly fantastic. It did look interesting. Damn, that's a lot of CDs. 
they are pretty upset about. Oh, let's see this. Yeah, and then Sony is curious why they don't reach their PS5 console sales. Thankfully, the key stores I could rebuy my PS my PS library on Steam very cheap, so I'm ready to abandon this platform. Similar how Sony is abandoning it. Nintendo and PC is the way nowadays. Wow, PlayStation fans are abandoning <laughs> PlayStation. Oh, shit. Bonaya, what's going on, man? Ben, what's happening? He is really capping for no more heroes just got started. In the, uh, pretty much, Ben. Pretty much. Trash. Nix's worst PS dev. Only on PlayStation Heritage. Ruined for pennies. How you've fallen, Sony. PC is getting more first party games this year than PS5. Nixes can port Horizon Forbidden West and Ghost of Tsushima to PC simultaneously, but we still can't get an Astro port for PSVR 2. What a joke Sony PlayStation has become. Can we get something other than boring, useless PC announcements these days? Did you also know that for Helldivers 2, PC got the update before PlayStation? I thought that was interesting. I see PlayStation removed my comment because it's the truth. Don't play us PlayStation gamers. Then, but when the unthinkable does happen, don't issue an apology crying about the loss of your execs gaming. For everybody, look here. PlayStation and Nintendo became the best because they didn't cater to everyone. PC does not benefit the PlayStation platform community fans. Capcom just gave a raise to all their employees. Turns out if you make games, people will buy them. And you flourish. And we know that people do this in the millions in the first three days of the release of a first-party PlayStation game. What happened to you this gen PlayStation? Hiroki Totoki happened, and he likes money. And because he likes money, he's putting his games wherever the hell he wants that he thinks it can make money. That includes Xbox. Why should I buy future games on my PS5 and future PlayStation consoles when games get ported to PC? I can wait. They will all get ported anyways. It's true. They're all, the whole slate is going, boys. PlayStation is third party. Hey, Susano, with that $1.11 super sticker. If you see only on PlayStation on a game, cover it. Means soon on PC. <laughs> Shit, boys. That's great. That whole slate is going to PC, man. That, 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 that's third party confirmed. This month makes it 10 years since Phil Spencer took control of Xbox. Rate his tenure out of 10. I rate him 3 out of 10. Now, I give him a solid 8 out of 10. Especially with the amount of bullshit he's had to put up with. I think he's done a great job. It could have been better. But under the restraints of the ABK, I think he's doing what he can. Only on PlayStation for now. <laughs> Only on PlayStation till it's not. <laughs> uh, Susanna, I gave it an 8 because of some weird decisions like not taking Final Fantasy 16, not taking Genshin Impact, not taking uh, other games that would have made bank on Xbox. There were some weird decisions that he'd... Uh, that he did. I don't know. But it seems uh, PlayStation fans are now going through the seven. <laughs> well, look at that. PlayStation fans are now going seven through the grief. Yeah, seven stages of grief. It's uh, the moment Phil Spencer started begging for Helldivers 2. He did not beg. He just said, who does it benefit having a live service game that's restricted to one platform or two? The more players these platforms have, the better. Right? I agree.
But anyway, chat. Uh, quick question for the full two of you that are here. Uh, tomorrow. I'm hoping to stream again tomorrow if I can uh, find the time. If I do, I don't think there's going to be much news. We're going to start with some news, obviously, if there is any news. But in terms of games, uh, what I'm, I'm thinking maybe either continuing Final Fantasy VII re, uh, Rebirth or we could play, um, what do you call it, uh, Redfall and continue finishing that. If uh, Dead Island 2 is um, cross-play, then that could work. Go away with Gollum. We don't do Gollum. <laughs> Genshin on this channel. Do I get to come on and heckle you? Genshin would work on my other channel. If you want to see Genshin break, I could probably do some of that on Saturday. I've got a lot to make up for that game. This get, this channel is not a waifu hunter channel. <laughs> Do I get to come on and heckle you tomorrow too? Maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. Option four Kong game. Option four Kong game. I am on the last level on Kong, so we could actually oh, yeah. finally see how that game ends. I don't, I've not really seen anything on Kong. I streamed it. All the levels. <laughs> I know it was painstaking, wasn't it? It was horrible. Oh, I know they will. Yeah, it was horrible. Cool. But anyway, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Right, folks, I'm going to call it there. I'm going to go get some food to eat. I haven't eaten yep, yet yep, yep. because I just jumped on this string and I'm starving. <laughs> so I will see you all potentially tomorrow, if not on Friday. Kong is a, how does one put it? it it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you put it. Right, folks, have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, if not Friday. And uh, hopefully I've still got, um, you know, I'm still employed by the end of uh, tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Tomorrow is always a, another day. Right? Even if I'm not on voice, I'll be here too. Cheers, buddy. All right, man. Peace out, everyone. And remain legend. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Remember, I'm telling you to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Hey, 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 you haven't hit that subscribe button. Hit it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. I haven't seen the numbers go up. Hit it. Hit that subscribe button. No. All right, I'm, I'm out, seriously. But hit that subscribe button.